Throw your arms across your eyes and scream, man. Scream for your life. <laughs> commentary thing that we're doing maybe 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 when we get around to doing that planet of the apes thing maybe we just do it as commentaries instead of straight up reviews or like maybe some sort of hybrid of the two or like we're sort of reviewing it as we're watching it or something you know what i mean totally uh, and i hope that they're fucking liking it because they're listening to it listening to it right now welcome back kids to the week of kong it is day four we are entering into a new era of the eighth wonder of the world today. Is he called that in this? I don't even remember. I guess we'll find out, though, because we are going to be watching the 1976 version of King Kong. Isn't that right, D? It is. It is. I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, this is the version that I sort of grew up with the most because we had a VHS copy of this, and we did not have a VHS copy of the original um, so in terms of nostalgia, this is, this is where my Kong nostalgia is at. That's, I'm, pr- I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's one that it's more recent. So it's one that's a bit more kind of remembered short and like kind of a shorthand way in the public consciousness. Like I think 33 is, is the more iconic King Kong kind of, um, look and and version but 76 is the one that everybody's probably more likely seen on tv and everything like what's the likelihood that somebody just stumbled on 33 just watching like you know prime time cable at some point you know like it's more likely that they would stumble upon 76 i certainly did and rarely did i ever stumble upon 33 the first time i ever saw 33 was on tv at some point like I said, we didn't have a VHS copy of that growing up, but I did wind up seeing it at some point. It's, uh, it must have been through TV. Um, but yeah, they, they they play 76 a lot more. Uh, just the other night, actually. We, we, we got done doing one of these videos. I went to bed, turned on the TV, and fucking 76 Gong was on. It was, it was magical. Um, and because of that, I definitely have a lot of nostalgia for it. But as we, we've talked about in previous commentaries... I also had a readily available version of 33 on VHS, so I grew up with both and have nostalgia for both. However, Kong 76 has a distinction for me because it's one that I got into more later in life. It's one that I kind of always looked down upon. Like, if you listen to my early YouTube stuff, which I don't, I don't necessarily recommend it, but if you if you do, um, <laughs> uh, you'll notice that I, I'm down on that movie a lot in my early YouTube stuff. Um, you know, I did a, I I was in that Who Reviews the Reviewers competition a few years ago, uh, season two, I think that was. Um, God, that was a long time ago. That was back back in 2012. Um, I don't. I think they've done like four seasons now. Um, anyway, so uh, I did I did a review of King Kong Lives, which we'll be talking about soon enough. But I mentioned in that that I I mentioned the seventy six a lot in that, and I mentioned that it's a lot better than this, but um, it's also not very good, and I bitched about you know certain elements of it, mainly that it it strays very far away from thirty three, and um, it's a bit kind of a schlocky seventies movie, um, which I guess we'll talk about in this, and I think that two of the things that I disagree with now is a I don't really think this movie is that schlocky. Would you no. agree with that? Yeah, I don't think it's shocking. Oh, well, um, not to, not in any way that's like not done intentionally. It's not like cheap or just like in poor taste. Well, mostly not. Um, it's a, it's it's certainly of its time, I suppose. You yes, could say. that is, I think, um, what more I'm saying is more of what I'm saying. But it's not a schlocky '70s movie. It's a '70s blockbuster, which is but what not it, uh, which is what it truly was. It was a blockbuster when it came out. Not of its time in the way that you watch, like, a bad 50s sci-fi movie and say, oh, it's just of its time. But more of its time in, like, you know, they, they they really weaved some a little bit of, of social commentary in this movie in a way that comes off almost, like, Robocop-ish. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, all right, maybe. I think maybe you're pushing it with your Robocop analogy, but all right, I'll 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 I'll, I'll buy you I'll buy you that. We'll talk about it more when we're watching the movie. Well, that was the first that was the first movie that came to mind that sort of did a similar thing. I'm sure if I thought about it for a while, I could I could come up with a closer example. But, but I don't uh, think very yeah. many people listening to this will agree with you. But and here's the point: this movie is polarizing because of because I think of its of its elements of the time, um, <laughs> and I I think that. 
it's turned into this movie that everybody is like, oh yeah, King Kong seventy six. That's the that's the schlocky that, again. That's the schlocky seventies one that strays really far from thirty three. Like if you you know I I remember when I bought the um, Kong King of Skull Island prequel book uh, to the original King Kong, which was you know which was like a prequel slash sequel. I've talked about it before, and Dylan, you listened to a little bit of it at one point. Um, in that uh, there there was like this there was like this quote from the author that mentioned or not the author it was actually I think it was Ray Bradbury who said this actually if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly or it was Ray Harryhausen I don't remember. It was some famous author or um, director or something, and he, and he said basically, if you hated Dino De Laurentiis as King Kong, but you remember and love Fay Ray and Robert Armstrong, you'll love this book. That was the quote, I think. And I mm-hmm. and I kind of lived by that for a while because I was like, I love this book, and I I kind of think that that version suffers a lot because of how far it strays from thirty three and the very different approach it takes. But nowadays, and I and I hadn't seen it in a long time because I just didn't feel like watching it because I had that mindset. But then over time, I got it on DVD, the DVD that I'm actually going to be watching tonight to do this commentary. Um, and I, I watched it more often, and and I and I really, I grew to kind of love it, and it became. We've talked about this definitely before. It became one of my go-to rewatchable movies, even above thirty three oh five and all the other Kong movies, even King Kong versus Godzilla for a time. Um. I will say that more recently, I would probably pop thirty three in before seventy six. But even still, in general, it's a movie that I go back to pretty often. Yeah, it is pretty rewatchable, and I, I will say. Um, it's also it's also the the perfect version to watch. Like, if if my if me and the family want to watch a King Kong movie because they're not necessarily into into as old of movies as I am, so they don't want to watch. Probably 33. the most accessible King Kong movie. Right, but they also don't want to watch Show Five because it's it's kind of longer, and my grandmother absolutely well, that's what I mean. despises. Yeah, it's 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 not it's, uh, it's a reasonable feature film length. It's set in a sort of kind of present day. Well, you know, for the time it was the present day. Now it's not, but it still feels that way enough. Um, it feels like the real world. It's, it's accessible, and this weird thing happens, and we see it through normal people's eyes. It's a little exaggerated, but it's King Kong, and you know what King Kong is, even if you've never seen the original. So, yeah, that's your entry point. Um, and better yet, it features a, a, a baby Jeff Bridges. Oh. That too. Well, D, we've done a lot of preamble as we always do. Um, so I think if we haven't been clear enough, you and I be- have a rewatched this movie pretty recently. Um, I've recorded another commentary for it this year that I haven't released yet. I will at some point. Um, it just required a lot more editing than this will. And, uh, in that, I you know I had a very positive viewpoint on it. Um, my co my co host did not, uh, <laughs> but but I did, and I still do. Um, I think this is a really fun movie. It, it has a lot of flaws that are interesting to discuss, and we will discuss them. But it's also got a lot of really cool shit in it that we'll also discuss. So that is the setup for this commentary, as always. Dylan, audience, do you have your version of King Kong seventy six ready to go at zero zero? If you don't, then pause this video and, and, and fucking do that. I mean, yeah, because we have nothing else to say. We should really get into this. We're like eight minutes in already. And I've got we're class on at 9.30 tomorrow morning, and this is like a two-hour movie, so we should get into this now. We're on like, what, day four? Like, you should know what you're doing by now. Come on, yeah, people. Yeah, uh, and I hope that you're listening to all – I mean, you don't have to listen to all of them in order. If you want to listen to the ones that you want to listen to more, go ahead. But um, even still, you should, A, be watching the movies along with these because I think you'll just have a much better experience. Trust me. Do it. Sit down when you have free time and you want to watch these movies, and this will just make it all the more different and unique and interesting. So even if you don't – even if we're not the most fucking unique and interesting dudes, watching it with other people who have something to say about this film will, will definitely enrich your experience. So definitely watch the movie along with it. Um but all right, so I hope you have it out at that point. I got, I gave you some more preamble, so we're at zero, zero, zero. We're gonna press play for King Kong seventy six in three. Hang on, my mouse wasn't on my player. In three, two, one, play. We're playing this on VLC, so we had a typical VLC delay. But otherwise, yep. we're seeing the Paramount logo. Stars are flying by, and it's going right, D. Yep, yep. The word Paramount just popped up on the screen. Uh... Mm, it did. So, 
I think we're I think we're pretty good as far as being in sync, at least for now. We'll see if there are any issues later on. Yeah, I'm at. Uh, uh, let's just take a time check real quick. I'm at uh, the uh, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Okay, I'm a little bit ahead of you because I'm currently on twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Um, I guess your delay was a little worse than mine. I didn't have a delay that time. Cool. Me either. Woo! Look at this, the Petrox Explorer. I love this. I love just opening in the midst of the voyage. Yeah, it's cool. That's cool. I always appreciated that. This this movie doesn't waste a lot of time, uh, despite being longer than the original movie. It, it still um, doesn't waste much time getting into things. I find um, that's non from Superman too, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. I can definitely see the uh, the resemblance. He also kind of. I know. I know. It's not the same guy, but he also kind of for a second when he first came on looked kind of like jaws <laughs> yeah i was thinking the same uh, thing but it's it's, uh, it's not that dude it is not a uh, richard richard keel it now isn't. this this character here with the glasses the oil scientist guy who's a, sort of a favorite character of mine uh star trek fans might recognize him as Rene abergenois who played odo in star trek deep space nine fantastic actor um clearly french <laughs> <laughs> clearly french yes uh, but, but I was talking it here. We have Jeff Bridges making his appearance. Uh, we gotta love Jeff Bridges. This, He's this probably, is a, probably actually the, drunk. They, they probably didn't have him drunk in the script. This is He's probably the though. youngest Jeff Bridges I've ever seen. I can't think of a movie earlier than this that I've actually watched with him in it. So this is this is the youngest Jeff Bridges that I have a uh, reference for, and he looks pretty much the same. Um, yeah, other than this movie, my other references for young Jeff Bridges are Starman. Uh, Do you know what year that came out? 80 something. <laughs> oh, yeah, so this is still older. Uh, There's Charles in... Grodin. Oh, love him. While we're in the sort of early setup portion of the movie, uh, I was telling you that I, would, I did a little bit of reading in my big Book of Kong knowledge uh, regarding this film. I didn't get to finish the whole chapter because it's a fucking long ass chapter. But I did read a, a little bit about the pre production, and there was actually a, a very drawn out sort of legal battle between Paramount and Universal. Uh, apparently, they both had this the idea around the same time to do a, a Kong remake, um, and they both a- approached RKO with offers. Uh, and apparently somebody uh, didn't actually sign the contract with Universal, but he kind of said, like, you've got a deal, because like, he liked their offer better than Paramount's, but he didn't actually sign any contracts. Uh, so they took that to mean that they had the fucking, they had it in the bag, and they go back and start developing their own version of, of the movie. Uh, meanwhile... God, I'd uh, love to see what that would have been like. Meanwhile, RKO actually signs a contract with, with Dino De Laurentiis and Paramount, because the, the guy who apparently had the actual uh, authority to make that call must have liked their offer better. So, so uh, Paramount had an actual contract to, to do the remake. So they so they start developing their version. Universal finds out about all this. They're pissed because they, as far as they're concerned, they had a, a verbal contract, um, and they sort of they sue for damages. I think it, I think it said it was like twenty five million. Um, and they they basically they sue RKO thing, or Dino De Laurentiis. Uh, uh, I believe Paramount. Um, Basically, what they're trying to do is, is apply a little legal muscle and sort of force Paramount Mount to uh, cease and desist so that they can make their version of the movie. Um, Which is, I guess, I guess what they want and what they tried to do all the way up until like a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, eventually, the court totally shoots down their their um, their lawsuit because Paramount has an actual written contract. All they have is a supposed verbal contract. They, they, and the judge said something to the effect of that it was paper thin and it sort of gets shut down, but universal didn't give up there. They then, uh, tried to, they discovered that RKO still had the rights to the book version of King Kong and that they had just given the movie rights to Paramount. So they tried to get the court, to uh, declare the book public domain so that they could then make an, another movie based off the book and Paramount still make the one that's a, technically a remake of the movie. You see what I mean? Like they tried to, they tried to finagle the situation right. so, that they, right. so that they could come out and say, our, oh, our, it's okay. So we're the not... original um, Lewis W. Lovelace version would be, would be what, would, would be what is public domain. And actually what we just saw on screen was the credits for all the original writers of the original King Kong, which is what 
this has the rights to specifically. Exactly. The screenplay. So, they, so, so they're really reaching at this point. They're trying to like finagle a situation to where they can make their own Kong movie and say, oh, it's based off the book, so it's totally fine. The book and, uh, came out started... in 1932, by the way, the original novelization of King Kong. But that was based on the script. King Kong was in production when, when, when that book came out. Yeah, yeah. So if anybody's listening to this confused, like, oh, I thought King Kong was movie original. He is technically, but there is a novelization the, that came well, the out. Novel, the novelization came out first because by the same logic that you just mentioned, then The Force Awakens is a fucking – oh, no, it wouldn't be. I think the book came out after the movie. But um, there would be Star Wars movies where it would be based on a fucking – it would be based on a book. Um, so I remember no, reading the novelization the novel- is based on the script. I remember reading the novelization of Revenge of the Sith, like in preparation for the movie coming out. So yeah, that that sort of weird oh, shit happened. Oh fuck! That's time. that was a that. Woo. You know, I don't think I did that for Spider Man Three. So uh, so anyway, yeah, you I know, mentioned that just because that's one of the movies I did that for, where I read the book around the time the movie came out. But I think it, I'm pretty sure it was after I saw the movie. So Universal. They go off and they start developing another ver- version of a Kong movie, and to, that they're going to say, "Oh, this is based off the book." And they're, they're, apparently, their movie was going to be called "The Legend of King Kong" because they weren't sure if they could just use the title "King Kong" because that might have been more legal problems. Uh, then, yeah, no, that would—that's nonsense, though, because it's, if it's got King Kong in the title, it's a problem. So then, De Laurentiis has to like step up production on his because at this point, it basically became a race of who could produce their version of King Kong first. De Laurentiis kind of had a, a leg up because he his production his uh, picture was further along in its pre-production, so he was closer to being ready to go. So he kind of had a leg up in that way. But at the same time, Universal was making all these bold claims like they were going to start filming like really soon, and it, it seemed unlikely that they could get it off the ground that quickly. And if the they same- would have gotten it out, they would have won. Is that what you're saying? Well, it, I mean, it, it still had to be determined in the courts, but they were already, like, moving this thing into production. They were, like, jumping But if they would have made The Legend of King Kong before De Laurentiis would have made this version, it would have been it would have been declared that, oh, the book is public domain and this movie is fine, you think? It's a possibility. More so, though, the problem is that De Laurentiis didn't want to have two versions of – two King Kong remakes out near the same time because there's only so much audience interest Then it would have been Never Say Never Again versus Octopussy. Exactly. I mean you kind of had, had a little bit of this going on anyway with Ape. But it would have been other. exactly the same thing. Yeah. So so it's it's kind of a concern. So they wind up stepping up production on this movie. They they had the Speaking stuff of this on the movie, ship. just one thing we're seeing on screen. This scene is is recreated in the trailer for Kong Skull Island and presumably in the movie. Yeah, and I would, I would also like to say this is one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. This it's, is my favorite scene in the movie. <laughs> because when Jeff Bridges steps up and starts talking about the legends of Skull Island, who boy, it's awesome and it's it's way better than when Denim does it in 33. He just kind of goes, yeah, some shit I heard. I don't know if it's true. We're going to go film it, though. It's going to be mad lit. This guy's like, dude, there's a fucking big, violent monkey there. And that seems to be more in line with what Skull Island is doing this year. Yeah. Uh, this is just all some grade A science fiction exposition. You know, a lot yeah, of- and that's the thing. This is... This is a more realistic sci-fi Kong as opposed to the fantasy of 33 and Son of Kong and the whacked out kaiju fantasy of King Kong versus Godzilla and King Kong Escapes. This is, you know, more okay. more grounded, more Hollywood accessible. This movie also came out at like the perfect time because this is, this is around the time that satellites were becoming a thing. So it's the last time that like, oh, there's new land masses we've never seen before. It's the last time you can kind of get away with that conceit. Um, which is the, which the, is the idea in in Skull Island, right? That's where you heard that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that well, that's that's why the uh, director of Skull Island, Jordan Vo Roberts, states that he decided to set his movie in the seventies is because because like the satellite technology and I mean it's it's stated in this movie too that they discovered the island. That's what they just said right now. Yeah, that's what that's what uh, uh, Fred Wilson just said. There's, a, there's actually tons of parallels in this movie to uh, to what we've seen so far in the Kong Skull. Yeah, trailer. all of this, all of this is exactly the same. Even the well, fog, that and also, the, the emphasis on the fog, um, and, also all, and all and all the, the the World War II sailors that went missing and all that, and, and and it's it's all very very indicative of what we've seen so far from the marketing for Skull Island. 
But also, when they actually get on the island, they start talking about how they're, like, planning char- explosive charges to try and, like, figure out where the oil is. So, like, they're, they're, they're bombing the island, just like we see in Seven in, in the new movie, rather. So, I mean, there's, all, there's a ton of parallels. Like, when I saw the trailer, I immediately picked up all the parallels to the whole, like, this scene. But then when I actually rewatched this movie not long afterwards, I realized, like, oh, there's, like, way more parallels than even that. Like, it, the, the new movie is almost a pseudo-remake of this movie with a little bit of Toho Kong thrown in. This is an uh, interesting idea for, an, a, like, a reason to go to Skull Island. Although they, yeah. they never call it that by name in this. They just say it's Kong Island, I think. They definitely call it Kong Island in King Kong Lives. But I like this idea of the satellites not only picked up, oh my god, New Island, but also oil, son. And Fred Wilson found that out from, he paid off some Washington, D.C. dude, which I liked. That, that, that was funny, especially since this is the 70s. This is this is post-Watergate, right? Or was that the 80s? Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. Oh boy, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not good history people, but it's it's government conspiracy and shit. The government's crooked. That, that was popular. I guess that's always yeah. been popular, though. But to uh, to wrap up on on this whole legal battle issue, um, see, it became something of a race. Dino De Laurentiis and them started like stepping up production on there. They actually filmed all the uh, all the stuff on the ship earlier than they were originally going to, just so that they could say that they had footage in the can, you know, to get get ahead of things. And then they took like a three week break to get like the rest of the film prepared to shoot um, stuff like that. Eventually, though, I guess Universal realized that they didn't have much of a leg to stand on because then they approached them with this like weird deal to like co-produce the movie, like to co-produce one version. But they made all these demands that were really unreasonable. They like were insisting that they use their script. They were insisting that they get like sequel rights and shit. Like it was it was a really bad, bad deal, and they didn't really have the the ground to be making all this. But I guess they were just sort of bullshitting, hoping that they could get something out of it. Why but did at they the end want of the King day, Kong so bad? But at the end of the day, they just wound up uh, settling. So Is it because Universal they had the rights to King Kong versus Godzilla, you think? And they were like, well, let's get all the King Kong rights. Possibly. Possibly. Um, like they I said, all, I, they it, also had the rights to King Kong escapes, right? Yeah, they. I mean, they definitely do now. Well, I think I think everybody knew that, that a remake of King Kong w- would be a hit because it was kind of the perfect time to do a remake of King Kong. There was a lot of interest in, in uh, disaster movies around this era. You had the Poseidon. Monster and- movies in particular with Jaws. Yeah, yeah. But also but also just like disaster movies like uh, Towering Inferno, uh, Poseidon Adventure, shit like that. So it's really it's really just the perfect time to do a Kong remake, really. Definitely. Um, I mean, and just a year after that, this, you had Star Wars coming around and like ch- changing the game yet again. But but under the the, uh, the sort of atmosphere that they were in at the time, it was the perfect time to do a Kong remake. And so I think they both had this great idea. And uh, at that point, it became like, well, who's going to get to do it? You know, who's going to get to make all that money? <laughs> yeah, I see. So, so did Universal maybe get to Paramount first with asking them? But then Paramount came in and was like, we're going to offer you more money. <laughs> Well, there was there was some pressure from Paramount to uh, for Dino De Laurentiis to settle with Universal because Paramount and Universal had had sort of a good relationship and shit. Um, and so at the end of the day, they just sort of wound up settling. But uh, Universal would have to wait their turn to uh, to get the Kong rights yet again. Uh, they tried again in the '90s. They tried to make their own version, which would have been a lot more of an adaptation of the Lost World. Then King Kong, oh look, he's got a book of primates. See Kong, see Jack knows what, what's on that island, or at least he has an idea. Sorry if you hear me chewing. By the way, I'm eating Reese's peanut butter cups. How do you feel about Jeff Bridges' Jack? He's pretty great. He gets a little bitchy towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. And the ending of this movie is bizarre, character-wise, for him and Duan. But all this stuff, he's charming as fuck, don't you agree? Yeah, I think he's probably my favorite Jack, honestly. Just because a you know, 33 Jack is just sort of, I'm the leading man, you know? Well, not even um, that, he's just like, I'm a sailor dickhead, man. Yeah, I feel like this version of Jack has, has a lot more layers, and also Jeff Bridges is just, you know, the, the caliber of actor that fucking really sells it and... Yeah, he's a professor. He's not just some hippy dippy dickhead. So he's got some Jack. dimensions to him. And he easily he easily beats out fucking uh, 
the 05 Jack, I think. Just cause I would have to agree. It, I, I think we it, talked it, about this in the 33 commentary. He's easily the best performed Jack. Hmm. Adrian Brody, many things. Not overly charismatic, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> would you agree that he feels like the most confident Jack, uh, Jeff Bridges? Yeah. I would definitely say so. I think this is easily the most um, memorable crew next to 05. Like, I just remember more of the faces and the names in this version. In mm -hmm. 33, it's like four people. <laughs> and also the captain in this, our Anglehorn in this, he's really, he's not much of a character. He doesn't really get much to do. Because Carl Wilson is a lot more in charge in this version than Carl Denham is in 33. I mean, not Carl Wilson, Fred Wilson. This is fucked up. See, this is funny and they played as like charming or whatever. But this is, this is fucked up. What Non just tried to do to fucking Jessica Lang right there. Are you right, D? Yeah, yeah. Just... Oh, we've been mad quiet. Um, it's really convenient that she had a book of matches on her that didn't float away. That has the fucking yacht name on it. On it. How many yeah. yachts have matchbooks with the name of the yacht on it? That one, apparently. Rich people, I guess. Wow, he's able to get fucking fingerprints print printed on this fucking boat. See, okay, that brings up one question. Do they have too much technology for Skull Island to be a threat? Particularly in this version where there's no fucking dinosaurs on it. Or big bugs or anything. Just one big snake that never attacks anybody. Mm -hmm. And Kong, of course. Maybe, but I mean... The guns that they have are pretty standard of the period. I mean, they don't have anything too well, crazy. they're also not the military. They're... They're just fucking, exactly. they're a fucking commercial vessel. So they don't have anything too crazy in terms of, like, destructive capabilities. They do have a lot of tech in terms of, like... Hang on, this is a great line. I know the day you completed your toilet training. I thought, that's a, that is an amazing line. They took this for Skull Island, too. He's a photographer, like uh, Brie Larson is in the new one. Right. Which I think is a great idea. She's a war photographer. Which is cool. Oh, he's got smelling salts. I love that he flunked out of medical school because he was like, fuck this. Okay, now here's a question. How do you feel about their chemistry? Between Jeff and Duan? Mm. Uh, Man, that's really confusing. You use the actor, one of the, the actor's name for one of them and the character's name for the other one. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, I, uh, anyway, so your chemistry, your chemistry opinion. I don't know. Whenever I look at Jeff Bridges in a role, it's always just Jeff Bridges, you know, so. Well, sure. <laughs> um, how do you feel about Jeff Bridges' chemistry with Jessica Lang, though? I guess it's it's fine. He's doing a lot of the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's I don't think it's the the strongest I've ever seen. She comes off as kind of a crazy person. A little which bit. Which I think is kind of intentional, but it's bizarre. I don't, I don't really understand what the purpose of it is. I don't understand what they're saying with it. Is it just that oh she's an actress and she's that's one thing that's kept from thirty three. She's an actress. Well, the whole point of this of her character seems to be she wants to be famous, and then that sort of becomes. This oh my, you're infamous! No, I'm sorry. <laughs> that becomes this this neat thing at the end where she does become famous, but under terrible, unfortunate circumstances. Which is the point of the ending and why Jack walks away. Yeah, which is weird. Why don't you wish King Kong Lives featured the same cast? I mean, it would have been impossible, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I wish that Jeff Bridges at least had come back. You know, I don't know that why they didn't. You think they'd be like, "Oh fuck, I should probably get involved," or maybe not. Maybe they'd be like, "Well, fuck this." Yeah, 
Maybe they were just against the idea of a sequel entirely. I don't know. No, I'm talking about the characters in the universe. Of as opposed, like, why wouldn't they show up? Oh, wow. Oh. Like, yeah, if, I feel like if that... you were if you were in these people's situation now, and you got this involved with like this insane King Kong thing, and he popped up again in the middle of America, wouldn't you want to get involved? Well, that's why I say I feel like I wish Jeff's character had come back because I definitely believe he would, since he's a scientist and he's. He's into this whole, all this ape shit. Yeah, and he's also a lot more proactive than Dwan is, and he doesn't run away from his problems as much. Whereas Dwan, on the other hand, I can definitely buy not wanting to come back because she's traumatized or, you know, maybe she she got a taste of that, that paparazzi at the end of this movie and then decided that she wanted to retreat from the public eye entirely. Like, I, I can totally buy her staying as far fucking away as possible. But Jack, it seems to me like he's the kind of guy that should have come back. I think he would have had a lot better chemistry with Linda Hamilton in the second movie than he does with Dwan in this movie. He's like, I fucking dated some bitch back in the 70s. <laughs> it's the 80s now. I'm going to date Sarah Connor. <laughs> She's a painter now. She's a recluse. She paints um, birds. She, If anybody mentions the word monkey in front of her, she kills them. <laughs> She's been arrested several times. She's never been convicted, though. She goes ape shit. Ah! Oh! You're a dangerous man, D. You're all weak. Uh. I don't think Jessica Lang is as bad as she thinks she is and as everybody else thinks she is in this. But when she gets hysterical, it's pretty hysterical as in LOL. Yeah, for the most part, I, I really I really get what she's doing. You know, this she's supposed to be much. playing... This right here is exactly what I'm talking about when I say hysterical. See, I, I owe think, my life to a movie. I feel like people who uh, I feel like people who criticize Jessica Lange's performance in this movie a lot of times they they think that she's too sort of flighty or whatever. But at the same time, that's sort of the the point of the character. Like she's supposed to be this flighty like actress type character, and I liked the movie she was in before her ship sank was called Deep Throat. I, I, I think I think maybe she was a porn actress who no, wanted to become was an actor. Called that. The movie she was watching was called that. No, I said what she was doing before the ship sunk. It was called Deep Throat. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think I think the implication is that maybe she was a porn actress, and this is her chance to break into like real. Well, I, I I think that the idea was the movie that the guy who got her on the boat was trying to make was porn, and uh, she didn't really realize that until that moment. So she got outside on the boat, and then it conveniently exploded, and now she's on the um the the Petrox Explorer, I think is what it's called, the boat. Yeah, there's a lot of stories like that out there, you know. Some young chick moves to Hollywood because she wants to be famous. Then some executive comes in like, I'll put you in my movie. And then they, when they get there, they realize it's porn. Uh, I think uh, this approach is pretty good, just montaging it all. They do it in 05 as well. I think this is kind of better, though. Like, we have one scene establishing, like, where they meet. And then we just kind of, we move on. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. And I don't, also, think, we, I don't think we linger too much after this. Oh, boy. Wow. That's that's very 70s. And also, I think the reference to Deep Throat is so I was going to mention this before. Like, that's very of the time. Do you think that that's one of those things where it's like it, it doesn't really hold up now for an audience? But I mean, everybody still knows what Deep Throat is, or even if they don't, they get what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it, it never bothered me. But that is definitely a, a, a cultural touchstone that was reminiscent of the period. The number one thing I think that sells this this montage, I, I mentioned this to you before this we started. This shot's too much. That's like very like cover girl photo shoot. Like that's not a that's not something a real person does. I mentioned to you before we started recording this. I think the number one thing that I think. See, and now we're to the undoubted. island. How far are we into this? Twenty one uh, minutes. Goddamn. No. Uh. Uh, I think the number one thing, undoubtedly, with that you can't even debate the, the the number one thing that I think this movie definitely has over over the O five version and even over the thirty three version, is the fantastic score by a fucking uh, shit who did it. Uh... John Barry for this movie is that what you're talking about? You're talking about thirty three. Yeah, yeah, John Barry. Yeah, 
Sorry. I well, I mean, listen, quick. here's the thing. 33 is very impressive because it's 1933. Sound movies were a new thing, and having a score that goes along with the visuals was a new thing, and that movie does it really well. So Max Steiner deserves a lot of props. But, yeah, yeah, this is John Barry. This is the guy who did all the James Bond music. He knows how to score a blockbuster, and goddamn, he does a good job here. Yeah, I think, it's great. I think this is some of his finest work, honestly. I really love this score to death. Yeah, I think uh, it's my favorite of his. I mean, I mean, outside of that, Goldfinger's really great from Russia with Love is a great score. A lot of his James Bond movies are really iconic, but this is another level, man. This is just something different for him and iconic and very nostalgic for us, of course. But it's also it's just good. It's good. King Kong music. Yeah. And it doesn't do... One thing that a lot of people um, criticize the 33 score for doing is uh, something that they call Mickey Mousing, which is when, like, a character is doing something and the and the music is, is going along with it, but in, in such a way to where it's like they're walking and you hear, like, a... Dun, 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 you know, like, a, like in a cartoon. Um, there's a little bit of that going on. Like, Kong will, like, turn his head and the music will do, like, like you know, something like that. Um this it's is a much lot more... more lined up with the stop motion than it is the the actual people. A lot yeah. of the dialogue scenes they... don't even have music. The, the score here is is a lot more sort of orchestral and it's a lot more traditional for for modern day filmmaking. Do you think that she's like overly sexualized to the point where it's kind of creepy? Because I kind of think they take it too far. She's almost got like nymph. She's almost like a nymphomaniac. <laughs> I wish they kind of played that up a little bit more. <laughs> really? No, um, I don't know. No. It, it strikes uh, me as a little much. Um, the, I can kind of see what you're saying with the RoboCop thing here. I don't think it's nearly as exaggerated, though. No, it's not as exaggerated. The reason I pointed to RoboCop is, you know, RoboCop is all about lampooning sort of the 80s culture of the time. This does a similar thing with, like, the, the 70s because of the whole oil sure. angle. Sure, okay. I totally uh-huh. agree with you. You're right. But it's I, I, I don't think it's nearly as satirical and 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 um exaggerated and, and and kind of cartoony as RoboCop is. This is a lot more straight-laced. And how do you feel about the oil lingo by the way? Personally, I think it it it, it makes sense as a way to modernize it to the 70s specifically because the thing about 33 is, uh, you know, it's okay. That... The thing about 33 is that was made at a time when sort of going out into the wild and taking random shots of animals and then weaving a story around it is an actual way that people made movies. By the time you get to the 70s, that's not really a thing anymore, so you need a new conceit. I don't yeah, I'm 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 very happy with the with the move away from the from the filmmaking angle. That's a good idea. Um it was done once and done once well. You know, and and, and in 05 they did it okay. It was a it was a different spin on it. But doing other stuff other angles on the, the you know discovering Skull Island and King Kong story. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. The oil angle, um, it's fine. Uh, I don't, I don't think it's particularly endearing. But that's not the point. The thing about King Kong Thirty Three is that the filmmaking nature of it is endearing and romanticized and fun. And I guess you can kind of argue that, like, oil, the oil industry is kind of romanticized here in terms of, like, oh, you go out and discover new islands with oil, and we're making yeah. the oil industry better and everything. See, I think it's intentionally not endearing, because... No, you're right. Carl, you're, you're absolutely right. I'm because just saying Carl I don't Denham, enjoy that as much. Carl Denham in the original, you're always supposed to like Carl Denham. Like, he, you might not yes. agree with everything he does, but you like him as a character. The guy in this movie, you still like him because the actor's good, but he's kind of slimy. You know, um, you don't... He's, he's fun to watch. I don't think he's necessarily sympathetic. He's kind of a dickhead. But at the end of the day, he is just a, mon- he's just a very money-concerned businessman looking out for the bottom line. My favorite, my favorite ex- scene with of his, we're coming up on it, is the exchange he has with Jack when they first see the wall. Yeah, he, he and he is a lot more like cartoony kind of villain than maybe. I think that is a problem with this movie. You'd have to agree with me there, right? He's a little too much of like a cartoony, like nah. I could see that a little bit. I mean, he looks kind of like Dick Dastardly in the face. Yeah. Bit, you know. Just he's a, he's a little bit too slimy. Where it's like, do we need this? Like, come on, man! I'm trying to watch a King Kong movie here. Do I need your slimy villainy? If you're gonna do villainy, be Doctor Who. You are not Doctor Who. But but he is '70s slimy. You know, he's that flavor of slimy. He's I get slimy you. Of- Again, but that's that's a 
See, there you go, D. That is a that is a period pastiche, a, a period archetype, is a more apt way to put it. Um, and it, it's not one that I think necessarily totally holds up now. This beach is in every fucking movie ever because it's Hawaii. I've seen it in Pirates of the Caribbean. I've seen it in a bunch of movies. This movie is largely shot in Hawaii, though, as is the new King Kong. I like that. I've always liked that big like gap over there in that cliff where like you can just walk through it to the other side. I don't know why. Visually, it's awesome. Yeah, that. I mean that's why they picked this beach. It's 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 very cool to film. It's also kind of like sparse looking and almost alien in a way. You know. I love it's this, kind of- Jack. I'm coming ashore. Take my picture, Jack. And he's like, all right, I'm doing it. Yeah, look at him. He thinks he's so fucking cool. That's awesome. That's a great joke. Because the idea, it's like a double entendre. It's like, well, yeah, he's saying it because it's like, oh, let's not get, get eaten alive on the island. Bring the mosquitoes for like, oh, I don't want to get bitten by bugs. But we think it's like, don't get eaten alive on the island. Like, don't get eaten by monsters. Um, this is a you weird a scene slight? I never really liked. Did you have a slight VLC delay when we push play again? Uh, not really. Hang on, I'm at, uh... I'm at 2855, 56, 57. Okay, we're back. We're back in line. Perfect. Okay, cool. Yay, hurrah. See, look how cool that looks, D. Yeah. In, 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 a, in, a, in a sound, on a soundstage, that would be a blue screen shot, but it's it's not. See, they, they, it, it looks like it, could, it should be a blue screen shot, but it's not. It's a trick of the they eye, picked, D. They picked a good beach, because, I mean, if you hadn't told me that this was Hawaii, like, I believe it's Hawaii. But at the same time, it, it doesn't scream Hawaii, you know. It's kind of it sparse. comes off as a as a fucking undiscovered island, doesn't it? Yeah, compared to a lot of the pictures you see of Hawaii, it's it's kind of sparse and really, it kind of reminds me of Isla Sorna from Jurassic Park a little bit. Yeah, that was the Pacific Northwest, actually, though. They filmed Jurassic Park, at least some of it in Hawaii too. So I guess that makes sense. The original Jurassic Park, not the Lost World. Right. They wanted to oh, from. Did I say Isla Sorna? I meant to say Isla Nublar. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks more like Isla Nublar. In my opinion. Uh, I like that the, the, there's like mountains on all sides, though, and you have to kind of go in via caves. That's cool. It really makes me wonder how the fuck they got Kong out, like how they got him off this island. I don't really understand. Yeah, you really get a sense of how mountainous the movie, the, the island is in this movie, and it makes it more uh, reasonable that you could hide a giant monkey on this island. Totally. That plus all, that plus all the fog. That's probably why Kong is alone in this version because they're well, not alone. Again, there's the giant snake, but he's like really the the big the big solo spotlighted threat and iconic monster. Um, like on the one hand, I miss how lush like the, the forests and shit were in the in the original on the original. Yeah, there's island, a lot but, more going on in the original King Kong. But at the same time, I, I like the the mountainous approach here. Actually, I feel like a combination of the two would probably be perfect. This I think feels more really realistic. Cool. This just feels more more grounded. Oh, here we are. We're at the wall now. God, look at the way she's fucking dressed. Jesus Christ. I mean, I love it. It's great. But it's just not. Would you dress like that climbing mountains? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I guess she didn't have a whole lot of options, you know. She probably had more she options needed, than that. <laughs> she needed something she could move in, so she wasn't going to take an evening dress, you know. That's true. No, I, I'm not saying like I'm not saying she has to cover up. I'm just saying like I'm, I, I don't know. I guess I'm, I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying it's done because they want her to look hot, and I think that that's so questionable. Do- so Daisy Duke, it is, you know, fucking. That's true. I guess this is probably the most practical outfit. At least Great she's not then. Running. I'm ha- we're all good. We're all happy. We're all satisfied with with our boners. At least, at least she's not running from dinosaurs in high heels. No. Oh. This island wall this- is an ancient <laughs> ruin. Ancient <laughs> ruin. Island is uninhabited. I love that. That's awesome. This movie is really well cut. That's one of the. Well, there's about. an uninhabited German beer hall. <laughs> Yeah, we're just going to start reading this movie line by line. (laughs) 
love Jeff Bridges. Yeah, it's great. What do you think of the wall in this one? I think it's flimsy. I bet Kong I busts it down all the time. I buy that these people could build it, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, there is no ancient civilization in this. Like, this is just a bunch of, you know, kind of, never, you know, I hope this doesn't come off as, like, racist or ignorant or fucking whatever, but or white supremacist, but this bunch of ignorant bumblefuck natives, and they just built this wall to protect themselves from this big monkey. Like, there is no grandiose kind of mythos to this. Well, I'm not going to lie for a second. I thought you were going to be like, it's a bunch of niggas. Like, <laughs> Right now, I have to cut that out. Now, I'm going to leave that in. You can live with that. I do, every day. Uh. Whatever that means. Um, So, this this plays out pretty much exactly the same as the original. I mean, the, the, the ceremony is very different. But the whole I like the of... guy. I like the guy dressed like Kong. That always captured my imagination as a kid, you know? So, where, so where is this island? So, do the people looking like this make sense? Because these are, I mean, again... Not to sound you know, ignorant or whatever, but these are just straight up black people. If they mentioned that in the beginning of the movie, I missed it. Yeah, me we too. Probably... Where are they? Like, like, wouldn't these people be like more Asian or more? Well, I don't know, <sighs> South Sea, I, whatever, whatever the nationality is. It not, it's not this specifically, you know, black, like or or African, or African, African American, Creole, Jamaican, whatever. Just it, this, this. This ethnicity of 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 the cast of the casted actors in this does not necessarily make sense of where I think they're supposed to be. Because King Kong is always supposed to be a South Seas island, right? Okay. Um. According to my book, because at the beginning of every chapter they have a summary of the film they're talking about. Um. Let's see, it's it's far out in the Indian Ocean. Okay, so it's near India, presumably. Is that near Africa? Not near India, but like the Indian, like Indonesia and all that shit. You know, like they set sail from Indonesia at the beginning okay. of the movie. There, the I buy that a little more. I mean, look, people from Asia went all the way to Hawaii on fucking rowboats, so I can, I can, I can believe some black people in the Indian Ocean. Why not? Sure, sure. I guess it's fine. See, I like that Jack knows pretty much exactly what's going on. That's cool. Yeah, I get the feeling that he spent a lot of time. He he goes out in in nature and and, and films like monkeys doing shit. I'm sure he's come across other um, primitive cultures, so he kind of recognizes a little bit of what he's seeing. But more than that, I think that he built a picture of this island in his head, and it's pretty much lining up with what we're seeing. And you, and you just buy it, man. He speaks it with such authority. And like you're like, yeah, that's what's he, going on. He, again, he's the most confident version of this character. Love this guy in the fucking Kong mask I always have. I don't know I why. love the ghosts, too. I, I wonder what they're supposed to be. Maybe the ghosts are like the spirits of the previous brides of Kong who have died. Because, I mean, that must have been what happened to all of them. He needs new Probably. ones, doesn't he? Probably. I kind of wish there was a scene in this movie like what we eventually got in 05 where you just find like the bones of his previous brides, you know? Yeah, that, oh, that was so fucked up. See, in this version, I, I, I love I love in Dragon Ball when they kind of do the King Kong thing with P- with uh, Oolong early on and he just takes the, all the girls back to his like castle and they're like these spoiled brats. Yeah, yeah that was great. That's, that's clearly a, a King Kong parody. Um, And that's, and a, they... that's an interesting play on it. Obviously, and they in, 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 in the actual episode. version, it always seems that he kills them, and the only reason he doesn't kill Anne or Dwan in this is because she's got blonde hair. Yeah. I actually, like, wound up remaking that episode, but in space later on in GT, it was weird. Um, All right. Why, why do they Why do they do... Uh... Why do they have put subtitles on this DVD for the for the native speak? Like I'm gonna read it and be like, oh, that's what they're talking about. Like, <laughs> a walk I, I like that they do I read that. It. Oh, but it's not in English. Oh, fuck that then. Why would yeah? Why yeah, exactly. would they even bother? I thought it was like they translated. I was like, oh, that's cool, but no, they didn't. No, because you still have you have Jack there to tell the rest of the the crew what they're saying. So it would be. Oh yeah, redundant. that would be weird. That'd be funny though. In a parody version, you do that. It's. 
but still, it's like like I'm gonna like I'm gonna read these fucking subtitles that say Nala Walu Makalaka and be like, oh okay, now I, now I get what oh, this guy. Oh yeah, right, very clear now. Thank you. Now I, it's an, it's an awesome monologue, an ultimatum that he's presenting. Yeah, this scene is pretty much exactly the same as the original, except it makes a little more sense. You're right, though. In a parody version of this, you would do like there was an episode of South Park once where they called Kyle into the front office because, you know, Kyle's Jewish and they wanted him to interpret what these two guys from Israel were saying. And then the two guys are just speaking English, but in a really like stereotypical like New York Jew accent. So, <laughs> like that, that that's what you would do like in a parody of this. You would just have the people talking like fucking like uh, we want the white girl man. And they're like, what, what are they saying, Jack? <laughs> or you have them saying, "By Joe, could we borrow your woman for a brief moment?" <laughs> like super sophisticated. Oh. I think that'd be fun here. One of the uh, one of the Naked Gun movies. Yeah, where, um... smoke that cigarette right next to that expensive equipment. You're a badass chick. <laughs> oh, great! She's going to turn into the Wolfman. <laughs> They did a joke like that in one of the Naked Gun movies where he kept trying to get a taxi, but every time he got in a taxi, the guy wouldn't speak English. So finally, he gets in this taxi with like this this dude in like African clothing, like he's got the fucking hat and the, the gown and everything. And he's like, oh, forget it, and he gets out of the taxi, and then once he leaves, the, the, the black dude just goes, I wonder what the devil he wanted. <laughs> that's, that's an awesome joke. This is exactly the same as in 33. Like, this shot is in 33. Yeah, but much. it's a g- much greater distance, though, at least seemingly so. Like there, because there, the boat is anchored outside of the fog in this version, well, so and in thirty three, f- it's anchored, you know, you know, right next to the island, as close as they can get. Obviously, this version is a lot smarter to to you know to, to have them put the boat outside of the fog, so that way it's harder for them to do something like this for the natives to come up onto the boat. But uh, obviously, it still doesn't really work. Again, this scene is pretty much exactly in the original. You're planning this out way too much, Petrox guy. I haven't you learned anything from your history. All you have to do is give them blankets with smallpox. Oh um, you see, this is too much. All this like, oh, whatever, fuck the natives, bar. Even if he was like, oh, we're going to bribe them with gifts, like, that would be better. But no, he's like, we're just going to fucking steamroll over them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> See, this is a little bit of RoboCop kind of commentary where it's where it's like, uh, you know, very of the time where Jeff Bridges is like, you know, all the kids will burn every Petrock gas station from here to California. That's great. Not if they kill Jack too, though. Uh-huh. I love See? I love the captain. He's just he's such a reasonable dude. He's like, he could be right. He's down with either or. He's down with like fucking steamrolling over or more being nice. He doesn't give a fuck. He's just all about whatever right? is easier for him. I feel like, he's I feel like whatever like, will get me paid quicker. Whatever. I feel like I'm in line with his view of the situation. You know, let's just fucking you know whatever whatever we gotta do, man. Whatever fucking... we would we'll decide on the day. You know. Oh, see, okay. Look, thank- they have oil. We need the oil. So all we got to do is convince people that they have weapons of mass destruction. And then... I feel like perhaps we are we get to the island really quickly, first 20 minutes, and we take maybe too much time to get to Kong. We take as much time to get to the island as we do when we're already there to get to Kong. Do you think that that's maybe a little problematic? It might be exactly the same as in the original. But it feels a little more drawn out here. I almost feel like maybe it's it's done. Um, because kind of like Jaws was big at the time. You look at the timestamp. We're it looks like we're gonna meet Kong at around an hour. Like every monster movie typically does that. Thirty three didn't. I th- I don't think this has to. In the neighbor, well, if thirty three waited an hour, then the movie would practically be over. It would be another Son of Kong situation. Like, yeah, exactly. The run- it it basically if you, if you look at it in terms of proportionally like runtime of the movies, um, it's probably about even. Like Kong comes in at like the fucking like 
not exactly halfway point, but maybe like 40% into the movie, you know, something like that. And then fucking the rest of the movie's about him. Like it's, it's probably proportionate. It's just a matter of the runtime being longer. Yeah. I'm not saying we're going to get a, like a, there's a lack of Kong screen time. Certainly not. It just takes a while to get to him. And I think that the movie feels like it kind of shifts gears after this. Like maybe it just spends, maybe like Oh five just spends a little too much time in each section. Like, I don't, I don't think, I think that at the end of the day, you and I will probably agree that this movie is too long. Uh, Bill. What? I'm ignorant to fucking nature's, uh, or not nature's, uh, nautical uh, things. You live on an island. Is it customary for a boat to have a fucking, like, floating, like, uh, like stage at the bottom of, like, a stairwell, like, on the side of the boat? That always struck me as weird. Like, it's, it's just a, out it's there. A, it's a uh, barge. Or just a, yeah. flo- a floating dock. Yeah. For a big so this, one like this, 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 sure. This is a normal thing, then? For a big one like this, yes. All right, all right. Well, because they, cause they have a smaller boat that's on that dock, yeah. It's 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 a portable dock. Yeah, okay, okay. Like I said, you know, just, you know, where I, where I come from, you know, it's not... Not you know typical. See many of these big boats in the fucking creeks around here, so I don't know. Fair enough. You know, you know, I've I've seen these things docked before. Yeah, no, they've got their own little like docks that they can set up. Maybe not this big. That's definitely probably exaggerated. See, this is something that is emphasized more in this version than any other. These people are all on fucking drugs, man. Woo. You can tell that they've drugged her. Certainly. Yeah, and, they uh, make that very clear in this version. I like her little like. They're doing it right now. Everything. Because yeah, in the other her, versions, she's Kong, totally drugged up. In the other versions of King Kong, do you do you remember if the natives like dress up the girl before giving her to Kong? Because I don't remember that. In thirty three, they dress her down, and and in two thousand five, they give her they give her a necklace. That's it. A necklace. Yeah, I, I, I like Kelly Code in this version. They give her like a headdress and like a ceremonial like thing. It makes a lot more so, sense, doesn't it? Yeah, like they have a ritual, and they're not going to half-ass the ritual just because it's a white chick. If anything, they're gonna dollar up even more. Be like, this ought to hold. That's them why they cool. want her. I mean, they they gave up on giving up the girl they were gonna give up, and they're giving her to Kong instead. So yeah, they definitely want her, and this is a, a big deal to them. It is really convenient that in both this and thirty three, they're doing the ceremony during the day when it seems like the idea is to do it at night with the full moon. Yeah, my thinking was that maybe it's like an all-day affair, typically. Like, you know, a whole lot of dancing and chanting, and then at night you fucking put them up on the thing and Kong It didn't them. seem like they were ready to go to you. Like, they were like, we're ready for Kong. Like, we're just we're just going to call him and see what happens. And yeah, maybe they can do the ritual whenever, and they just put it off tonight because now they're like, shit, well, we got to, like, go get this white chick. This shot, that shot was exactly in 33. What do you see? This is, I think this is dumb. Here's my problem with the oil thing. The way it's used on in the actual like Skull Island, you know, kind of structure is dumb. They use it to oil the fucking door bar. That's kind of don't you agree that that's dumb? Well, I'm sure they, they probably use it for more than just that. That's just what we see them using it for. I mean, think about it. If you live on an island, on an island and there's just like pools of oil around. You're gonna you're gonna find all kinds of crazy things to use it for. I mean, really. I mean, like it's just. That, I don't I don't see how much that doesn't involve fire. These people aren't making like fucking engines. What are they gonna use it for? Like as far as these guys are concerned, like it's just another natural resource that's around them. So like, why the fuck wouldn't they use it? Like, yeah, they figured out a wrong way that they could use it to grease things up. I'm sure they've probably figured out that it's flammable. I don't know how flammable because it's not done cooking yet. But you know. Yeah, it's as useful as mule piss, as will be said earlier. I don't know. The oil angle always came off as a bit contrived to me. But uh, I'm not having that as much this time, so I'm not going to fight you on it, you sassy bitch. No. Uh, <laughs> the altar looks identical to the original, even more so than 33. I mean, uh, than 05. I feel like this movie, in some aspects, is closer to 33 than 05 is. In some aspects, yes, it's weird. A lot of a lot of structural and more specific story beat and pacing aspects. Like, so far, this has been a pretty straight remake of the original once we got on the island. All the stuff before that is very different.
But once we got on the island, it's pretty much the same. It's going to start changing once Kong shows up and takes Anne. Uh, the Duan. See, I just I just mixed them up. Once Duan. Kong shows up and takes Duan. But all the stuff where they get to the island and they encounter the natives and the ritual is performed, and even all the stuff on the boat in between is identical. I mean, we even had the, sh- the, the scene where, you know, Jack and, and Anne or Jack and Duan, in this case, are talking at night and have like a... They they were about to go fuck before Jack went off onto the island, but but it got canceled. It got to cancel because the fucking natives took took Duan. So, you know, it's super close. I really they just, they just, they they just won... didn't want to put dinosaurs in their version. <laughs> I really wonder if they had won that legal battle, what Universal's King Kong seventy six would have looked like. It probably would have been a lot. It, it, I I guarantee it would have had dinosaurs. It would have been a lot closer to thirty three. And it would have been a lot weirder, and I probably would have. I probably would if, if. Okay, honestly, if that would have came out the same year, and it would have been what I think it would have been, I probably would have, would have liked that more, unless it was like horrendous. But I, I was always really bugged by the scaled back nature of a, uh, the story in this and the mythos. But one thing that I always had with this, with more than any other version of King Kong, is this was always the scariest version of King Kong to me, especially as a kid. Like, this version oh, def- freaked me out as a kid. I was like, oh my god, it's so scary, Big Monkey! Yeah! The roar really does it. It's a freaky, powerful, intimidating roar. The scene when Kong comes out of the trees, especially, is absolutely terrifying. Um, I, mean, I love we'll talk the about horns this. in this. It's, that's, this, is, uh, this is my favorite way of calling Kong. Uh, and we can talk about it more when we get there, but I think this movie kind of has the best ending of the three versions, just because... It's so fucking brutal. <laughs> it's pretty solid, man. You definitely feel the weight of the uh, of the wound, of the gunfire wounds a lot more. But yeah, we'll talk about it when we get there. See, look at how drugged up she is. She's fucked up, man. She can barely stand. If she wasn't being supported by those ropes, she'd be fucking falling over. I really wish I'd had time to read more of the chapter on this in my book because I'm, I'm sure there's probably something in here about why it's so scaled back in terms of like creatures and things on the island. I'm sure there's got to be. I mean, know, I can probably figure it out. I mean, it's because they didn't know how to do it. Kong is suitmation. That's easy. That's not easy, but it makes sense. That's that's a thing that's very easy to pull off. But do, when you get into doing dinosaurs and everything, that's a whole other thing altogether. And then that is that. Then you're getting into Godzilla territory, and I think they wanted to avoid that. I think they, they they actively avoided dinosaurs to avoid people being like, oh, King Kong versus Godzilla. They wanted this to just be King Kong. So I, know, I think that I we've got that. a big snake, and that's it. He's got one thing to kind of grapple well. with, and we don't need anything else. He's enough on his own. Man, just the close-up on those eyes and that ma- and that face. So, such a good mask and suit. Yeah, this is my favorite Kong face. Um I can it, agree it, with it that. Has, this might be my favorite Kong design overall. Uh, I'm, 33 is, a, is uh, maybe 33, but this is this is pretty cool. I love I love this Kong. Yeah, we'll see how I feel after walking out of Skull Island. But currently, this is my favorite Kong design. It's very like similar he, to this. I like how the face is is very versatile. There are scenes when he's very sort of like loving and playful and whatever, and then when he gets mad, like he just fucking goes vicious. Yeah, it's a very expressive Kong. This is amazing. Oh my god, they got the R in the fucking R. subtitles. That's amazing. Look at him beating his chest, too. Hey, D, good, look, good compositing. Ooh, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? It is. It's, it's a rare, so well. beautiful thing in this time period. See, Dylan, Dylan and I have been watching a lot of bad monster movies lately, and this, uh, so far, has not been one of them. One, the Kong ripoff of the same year, Ape, or as I like to call it, A asterisk P asterisk E. Uh, there is some terrible compositing in that film. Yeti, giant of the 21st century. Yes, Yeti. There's some that, that's better than Ape, but there is still some bad composites. Um, that looks pretty good. She she looks a little too bright, but otherwise it looks good. And the giant Kong hand works really good too. Yeah, all oh, this is so well done. Oh, uh, the okay. That some of the blue screen there was a little shaky, but it's it's overall pretty good. If anything, it's the distance between Kong and his arm that's a problem. The arm should be moving more if he was going to rear his head back like that. 
Yeah, word. But the shot, the shot of him in the distance. Oh, back. that looks awesome! I love that. We've never seen anything else like that. I love that we get to see him and everybody else. Wa- That's awesome. We get to see them walking away and him walking away. It shows yeah. the kind of casual awkwardness to this, where it's like, well, I guess we're done. Let's all go home. Now yeah, they go like back to partying, Kong. and Kong just goes off to do whatever he's going to do. I like that Kong from a bird's eye view. That's nice. Yeah, again, it's a re- it's rare that we see monster movies from the uh, monsters in monster movies from the top down. It gives you a good sense of scale too when you look at him and you look at everything around him from that bird's eye view. Um, Do you buy that they would be this scared by the flares? I mean, look at all the fire they've got. Yeah, but this is kind of a different thing. I mean, really. I don't know. I don't I, know if they'd be I, so scared. I think they probably would have had to shoot a few of them. I mean, it's sad, but it, it's. I think that's more realistic. Well, they're also firing their guns into the air. So aside from the, like, what the fuck are those red things flying through the air, there's also all the noise and the... Not nah, buy it. I mean, we don't know if these... Oh, no, I guess we do. I guess these people have seen civilized people before with guns and with modern technology before. So I guess they might... They, they probably know what a gun is or what it's for. <laughs> but I mean... Uh... You know, one thing you were talking about how we've been watching a lot of a lot of bad monster movies lately. Many of them Kong knockoffs. One thing that a lot of those have that I don't think this movie has, at least not that I can remember, is like weird scaling issues, where like the the, the size of the monster is inconsistent from shot to shot. As far as I can remember off the top of my head, there ain't a whole lot of that going around in this movie. In this movie, it all seems pretty consistent. Um, the special effects are largely consistent. Until they start using the big robot later. Then the consistency is not something that this movie has. Yeah, that was certainly an, an ambitious way to approach those scenes. Ambitious is one way to put it. <laughs> oh, certainly ambitious. Uh, and, uh, the execution, however, uh, may have been a tad lacking. <laughs> this island just seems so much more barren. But one thing I do know, uh, just from skimming this book, is that there were some budgetary issues going home with this movie, especially once they had to uh, step up production to try and beat Universal in the race, because, you know, filming earlier than you mean to, that means... a. You know, do you think that that much. killed dinosaurs in a more whacked out Skull Island, or do you think that that would have been axed either way? I don't know. It's possible that it might have been, been because of, of budgetary problems. Uh, like, I, like I said, I'd, I'd have to read this chapter in full, and I didn't get to. Uh, i got to start remembering to read these ahead of time. I was trying to read it all tonight, and I got through, like, not even half of it. Um, I mean, even still, thank you. I mean, thanks for doing that anyway. You definitely brought a very a very interesting insight to this movie, one that I didn't have, that I didn't even have before. Um you know what would have been cool about King Kong Lives as a follow-up to this where he didn't fight any dinosaurs or anything? He should have fought a dinosaur-esque thing in that. Just even one. Just like even one, maybe even kind of Godzilla knockoff kind of thing. Just a big yeah. dinosaur or lizard or something. As opposed to, he's got a girlfriend and the military wants him dead. I love this. He just changes his mind. Okay, so here's a here's a slight excerpt from the book, just to give you an idea. It says, money was tight from the start. The race to beat Universal had pushed the initial $12 million budget to around $16 million, and and the push meant to meet the Christmas deadline was driving it even higher. To help keep costs under control, a few separate scenes were combined, and a sequence in which a giant snake attacks the search party was eliminated entirely. So that snake was supposed to be in more of the movie. Oh, I wish uh, that snake would have fucking attacked the search party. That would have been awesome. See, if they, would have, if they would have built it up more as, like, on this island, there is Kong, and there is a big snake, that would, that would have been enough for me. That would have been interesting. Yeah, I think I think that's what they were originally planning on doing, but there were just budgetary problems. Uh, De Laurentiis went back to his distributors and asked them all to increase the amount of their guarantees. Uh, to entice them to do so, he screened a cut of it. You know, I... He screened a cut of all the scenes filmed so far. Impressed by what they saw, all of the distributors agreed. So he managed to get a little bit money, more money out of them out of that way. But uh, just from what I've skimmed, this seems to be one of those movies where the the, the, the budget just kept rising over time as they were making it. And they're really, lucky that it, they're really lucky that it was successful when it came out because this could have been a massive bomb. Um, they talk about – what exactly the idea behind Kong taking her is in this a lot more than in 33 or 05. They're like, what the fuck? Why does he, why did he do it? If he's not going to eat her or kill her. 
Yeah. Well, later on, uh, another one of my favorite scenes with the with the mustache guy is when he's like, the thing tried to rape you. She's like, that's not true. And he's like, he tried to rape you, honey. I mean, and he's not wrong. No. But I just love how matter of fact he is. He tried to rape you, honey. He's very, I mean, it's a very, it's a very simplistic view, but it's, again, he's not wrong. Man, look at how good that looks. Oh, that looks like a real ape to me. Like, I buy that as a living thing. I don't always. That blue screen's not great. Fucking Rick Baker. Yeah, I'm, uh, this is Rick Baker, the great, the great Rick Baker. American Werewolf in London, the 2010 Wolfman, other stuff. Other things. Other things. <laughs> He's great in like interviews. If you've ever seen him, like in a documentary or something, or he's very he's got a very good sense of humor. Cool guy, cool guy. I'd have a drink with him. Uh, so yeah, here we get the first of many romance scenes between between Kong and and, and Duan. Yeah, this one is a very a little bit more kind of horror bent initially. This scene always scared me because I was always like, if I was in a situation like this where there was a big monkey this close to me, you know, doing all this shit, I'd be fucking shitting myself. I, I would kill myself on the spot. I would just break my own neck. Well, the genius thing about this scene Dark is that returns Joker style. The genius thing about this scene is that the score has completely stopped. So it just creates like this eerie tension. You don't know what's going to happen next. Kong's face is kind of soft, but every now and then he snarls a little bit, and he's like, is he going to like fucking squash her? Like, you don't know what he's going to do. That blue screen's not great either. And it kind of it kind of puts you in her shoes a little bit. Like, she's crawling around. She's obviously a bit nervous. Um, <laughs> She doesn't know what he's going to do. And and you feel that right along with her. You're like, and you're like oh, God, what's going to happen? I think I absolutely agree. I mean, I, I felt that as a kid. I would often turn the movie off at this point when I was a kid because I was like, all right, I'm done. This is scaring the shit out of me. I'm going to go watch King Kong vs. Godzilla now. When I was a kid. This movie is, like a... is super well-directed, I would have to say. When I was a kid, not like a uh, not like a like a 10-year-old or something, but as a very small child... I can remember being scared of Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. <laughs> See, one advantage to, I mean, it's fitting we're watching this on Valentine's Day, or at least we were. Now it's not Valentine's Day, but we were watching this oh, on yeah. Valentine's Day. Uh, uh, this is probably the most romantic Kong movie, maybe next have, to 05. I still have 20 minutes of, of Valentine's Day in my time zone, so it's very real for me. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle and sadness is real. Uh, I but, mentioned that earlier. While other people are out, you know... Uh, Frolicking and romancing. We're we're here watching King Kong seventy six. Watching for your a, a questionable romance picture. He tried to rape you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh Kong, she is saying no. But yeah, you're totally oh. you're totally right about the really big, like variation in his face. Like he looked super calm and calm and peaceful and chilled a minute ago. Now he looks like a fucking monster. That blue screen doesn't look too bad. You know what looks a lot better than the blue screen, though? The what? Kong hand. Oh, it looks so... It looks exactly the same as the suit. The hand is great. The skin on it wrinkles just right whenever he like moves his fingers or whatever. It's, it's so realistic. And, I mean, again, just the face on the suit is so much better than the blue screen. It... it, it, it... The only problem with it is that sometimes when like she interacts with it, you can tell where it's rubber. Like it'll it'll dent a little more than it should. You know what I mean? Like when she when they do the close up on his on his lip, that's not that's not awesome because it's not the suit. It's a big Kong face, and it's kind of obvious because it doesn't move. That's a pretty good shot. I forget that's about a, that. Wow, that's probably the best blue screen in the entire movie. That actually reminds me of that one poster from Kong Skull Island we have where Brie Larson's like in the tree or whatever and his face is like right up near her. You're not wrong. He's trying to rape you, honey. <laughs> That's a fucking great line. You goddamn chauvinist pig ape. That's so that's so seventies. See there you go, that's the shot I mean where it's like he does it doesn't really look like that's, see, that's so much better. Why do they just use the blue screen take? Why do they need the close-up on her punching the fucking top of his lip? Because they wanted a variety of shots. Show you it from yeah, different good. Get, co- get coverage, but make sure the lip's going to move if you're going to show her hitting it. <laughs> Let's get physical. Physical. 
Okay, yeah, so right there, his the the arm is too far away from his face. I love when he rubs like his 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 mouth though, and he's like, "You fucking bitch, you hurt me." See, now she's trying to seduce him, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm into this now." Oh, I fucking bet we're gonna be good friends, baby. Oh my god, what sign are you? See, this is so seventies. What's your sign? I know it's kind of perfect for the period, isn't it? it it totally it totally works. It You yeah. show what is big with your son. Do you <laughs> think it just makes her an, a more interesting character than Faye Razan because she's kind of trying to to appeal to him a bit, I guess? Yeah, yeah, because Faye Razan, I mean, you know, once you're on the island, she pretty much just exists to scream. <laughs> um, Again, just probably may, maybe a little more like a, of, of an abject terror a realistic reaction. See, he looked very cool there. He looked very chill. Like I think the best person in the in the Anne role in these movies is certainly um the name the Naomi Watts version from O five. But I I, yes. I really like the Lang's Dwan. I think it's yes, a stupid. Yes, I think the fun. character is better than. Yeah, I I think that she's pretty good. You know what? The performance is fine and the character is good too. I I think it, there's just some some missteps in in terms of um you know doing this whole young actress thing that were just inevitable for the time. There are moments. Story. Where she, there are moments where maybe she hands it, hams it up a little bit too much, but overall, I there, think. There, I, think I mean, there are overall mo- moments where maybe this movie hams it up a little bit too much in the wrong ways. Like just instead of making a more mystical, fantastic universe, instead of just making it dumber. <laughs> yeah. The problem is, you know, if an actor knows how to ham something up well, it's always it's some of my the most my favorite moments in movies. Like fucking the guy with the mustache does it all the time in this movie. Um, but but Jessica Lang, she kind of struggles with that a little bit, you know. I think that the lack of creatures and dinosaurs kills all this, though. This all feels almost superfluous. Like, who gives a fuck what they're doing? And the island, like, look at this. Like, there's no, there's no jungle. Yeah. Do you well, think there it's was fair? before. There was a little bit of jungle, but this is all like mountaintops and valleys and and all that. Do you think it's fair to say though? that um, the only reason that criticism even exists is the fact that this is a remake to the original version that had all the dinosaurs and shit in it. Do you think that if this movie in some weird alternate universe was the first version of Kong ever made, do you think you would have that problem? Yeah, because I can tell that they're trying to get around it. Well, this movie would not be like this because I can, because I can, I can see that they're like, oh, we don't have any dinosaurs for them to fight, so we got to have them go at each other's throats to have any drama whatsoever as opposed to, you know, just having dinosaurs show up and attack them, which is probably what the people want more. So we're kind of trying to make this as, as vitriolic and, and cutthroat as possible. And I think that it works. I, I, I think that all this drama stuff is good. I, I think that it definitely adds a much needed sense of drama into the scene. So if this was the original King Kong and there was no 33, I don't necessarily know if I would go... Well, this is boring. I would just go. Well, I wish there was maybe a little more to this. I don't know. You're probably. I, I right. love that line. I love that line, by the way, where he tries to uh, play it off by being like, "There's a national oil crisis, and we all have to move above our petty interests." <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Which is true. That's why Godzilla movies stopped being a thing a year prior to this. Yeah. Wow. This is only a year after Terror of Mecha Godzilla. Quite the leap. Uh, <laughs> Despite the, the, the talk you were giving... Oh, that, that's probably the worst looking the hand gets. This scene really seems to be I, exactly recreated in Kong Skull Island. And I don't mind it. It's Maybe it's a little too sappy and it's a little too over the top. Not even over the top. It's just a little too long. I really wish they could have made like an Ooh, 80s that's, version. No, that's, that blue screen is no good. I really wish they could have made like an 80s version of King Kong versus Godzilla. Because how cool would it look if this suit fought the fucking 84 Godzilla? We were supposed like... to get a 90s one. I mean, that's what Toho wanted to do in 91 as opposed to King Ghidorah. Well, I can only hope that their Kong suit would have looked more in line with this rather than what they fucking did. Who the fuck knows, uh, man? This is, this is probably my favorite giant monkey like suit period in any movie. You should have asked Koichi Kawakita what it would have done because he did the effects for that movie. Like, like I don't know. Maybe you've seen a better ape suit somewhere, but this is this is the best I've ever seen. Ah, uh, 
That's a good question, my friend. Actually, you know what? I think there might have been some suitmation done for the 90s remake of Mighty Joe Young. And if that's true, then that's better than this. Yeah. That's a lot of puppetry, though. This is probably the best ape suit that's this kind of suitmation. Because Planet of the Apes isn't the same as this. And I'm talking about the Tim Burton one. Like, look at those faces he's making right now. Like, I guess they have air bladders in in his face or um, something. Um, you see, I don't think that necessarily looks amazing because I can tell that like they're they're they have a bunch of apparatuses in there to approximate a big gorilla blowing on a girl. But you can tell that that's what's going on and that she's got a fan on her right now. So at this point, you're watching the movie and you're like, "That's Jesus, a creepy there... ass shot." But it, again, it's it, it shows the ver- the variety and the expressions that suit can do. Yeah, you watch this movie and you're like, Jesus Christ, is there any face this suit can't make? Like, <laughs> Love this scene, too. Oh, yeah, this is one of the best scenes in the movie. It'll be real great oil. Oh, he's drinking booze in that moment. That's clever. Get it, D? Yeah. I really, I really, I really dig this because it it gives him a much more realistic reason to try and capture Kong. I love how he's he's just dicking with this guy. He comes up on the beach. It's gonna be great oil. Ten thousand years, you son of a bitch. I guess he's got a lot of job security. Because you'd think that he'd go to this guy and be like, oh, sir, I, I have a problem. But no, yeah, I guess no, he's like, ah, oh, fuck you, Fred. I know, I I got job security. You don't boss me it. around. He's a cheeky motherfucker. There are moments in Deep Space Nine where he, he does, he shows a little bit of this cheekiness, but this is probably the most cheeky I've ever seen him. <laughs> I love this shot of him trying to reorient himself and, and uh, get control of the situation. And the dude's just laughing, drinking in the foreground. That's a really it's good it's good foreshadowing for what's going to happen. But you're right. You know the original version of the story. You know the the 33 version. Like Carl Denham, he could have just went off and like filmed a different movie. Like he didn't really need to capture the gorilla. This Petrox guy has no choice at this point. Well, not no choice. I mean, he could just leave uh, <laughs> and be and, and be happy with 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 getting the girl back. But no, nah, obviously that's not satisfaction for his character. So. Yeah, if I think gonna... it, ma- it makes a little bit more sense in this version that he would he would try to capture Kong because why he came there has turned out to be a fluke. But if he's like, hey, I didn't get the oil, but I got this fucking big monkey we can use for to make millions. He, he's got to he's got to salvage this voyage in some way, you know? Uh, yeah, and... absolutely. And, and in 05, they do it in terms of like, uh, you know, Carl Adam loses all his camera footage. So he he also he also feels desperate. I don't think we're gonna have a log scene in in the in the Skull Island movie, uh, which yeah, would be, it'd be weird. Weird, to see it'd have to be a really big log. Would you be weird to see a Kong movie with no log scene for a while, uh, for the first time probably? But do you think we'll have something equivalent? You know, some some sort of similar situation. You know, not a log, but but something kind of uh, an, uh, analogous. You know, uh, probably. I mean, we're getting something like that with the help with the airplanes taking him down. With the helicopters fighting Kong in the in the trailer and in the in, and in the movie, presumably. Ooh, that blue screen's no good. Yeah, the shots of them falling into the canyon looks bad, but him moving the log looks pretty good. <sighs> There's a little bit of like a weird soft blur where the the edges of the log meet. This the... looks a lot like just a set, though. Like this all doesn't look like a real island. Well, I imagine this had to have been on a set. I mean, you're not wrong, but again, I'm just saying that. Maybe we should try and avoid that. Did anybody ever think, let me back up off this log? Like, this idiot's just like, I'm going to jump off. That's Bo. I'll have you know he has a name. But, I mean, D, that turns out to be the smart thing to do. I mean, he ends up saving himself. I guess. Oh, I like that, that Kong tries to, to... kick Jack off with the rocks. See, this was always the scariest version of Kong trying to grab somebody in this scene, although he really should be able to get him. 
maybe that's the scary point is like oh he's just about in there like if if Kong could see him he should he could probably get him I like that 70s haze survived the log you know ooh you see look he's getting his hands in there Kong really should be able to get him yeah, I feel like Jack is ever so subtly like dodging those fingers <laughs> so that Kong thinks there's nothing in there, you know? Well, he doesn't think that there's nothing in there. He just thinks that he can't get him. He can't see. He can't see exactly what's going on. For all he knows, maybe Kong, uh, maybe Jack like climbed into a cave or something he can't see. That could I, I like so that good. moment though, where he kicked the ground in frustration and then he was like, ah, fuck this. See, he has a much more direct reason for knocking the log down in this because he doesn't want Jack to get across it. He's this, like, this he's, composite isn't he's great. Like, he's going like to be stuck glow. on this side with me, and I'm going to get him. That's great. There was like a glow around Jack whenever they cut to the wide shot of like Kong standing over the cliff. Like That was no good. It, it also doesn't look so much look like night as much as it does like the middle of a storm. You know, like all the everything looks gray. It's just overcast, really. See, this almost looks like King Kong versus Godzilla with all these map paintings going on. Honestly, though, if the island is surrounded by this like fog bank that never goes away, shouldn't it be kind of overcast all the time? Wouldn't you think? Yeah, theor- theoretically. Especially since in this movie they explain it as like the the uh, the cloud bank is coming from the I oil. I think the mountains cut it off the cut off the fog though. This island is, like, terrible for global warming, by the way. It's just, like... Just pouring out oil and monkey breath. Monkey farts, too. Ugh. So, w- which one of those do you think has the bulldozer in it? That one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking no. Um... How did they get that bulldozer there, D? How do they drop the bulldozer out of a plane? I think that their ability to capture Kong in this is also helped by the fact that they're an oil company and they have containment and they're ready. They're, they have they have workers who are ready to deal with a volatile situation, as opposed to a film crew and boat crew who are expecting to be working for a film crew. Do you think maybe the reason that the oil on this island is so much younger and, and not able to be used is because it, it obviously it must have formed more recently? Therefore, why we still have like this prehistoric giant ape and giant snake living on this island? Because it's all sort of more recent. You think that might be the idea? So what are you saying? That all that happened really recently? Like something something occurred in the recent history that made Kong and this giant snake and... No, what I'm saying is that recently, like from a geological standpoint, not like recently from our from our standpoint, there were no, more giant creatures, there were more giant creatures around on this island, and there are still some residuals left over. But but those giant creatures dying off is what's now forming into this young oil that is not yet being able to be used. Do you think that might be the idea? Oh, that's interesting. Maybe. Okay, okay, kind of see that like turning into the fossil fuel, I guess. Why not? I mean, I it have to be they have to be ancient as fuck. Like it wouldn't be recent, but it'd be more recent right, though. Again, I see what you're again, saying. Yeah, using recent from like a geological standpoint, not yeah, from a yeah. Fact. I see. I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. That's Two interesting. Ago, good. Good. Two good. Pull. Kong daddy died, and now he's oil. Like, no, that's not how it works. Obviously. Yeah, Kong's dad died and became oil. Yeah, no. I doubt that that was their thought process, though. Just something that occurred to me just now. Uh, they were just like, oh, there's oil on the island. Whoa. That's great. Bone? I, I love that he comes back so fucked up. Bar. Bar. I love that. They're at, they're at the bar. You know what that shot actually reminds me of where he goes, where's the others in the black guy just does the cross over his neck? It actually kind of reminds me of that joke, the shot from Spaceballs where the guys, they're coming in the desert and the guy goes, we ain't found shit. Like, <laughs> Is that because he's black, D? No. <laughs> no, it's just a similar uh, uh, shot. Uh, that's bad blue screen. Oh, we're already at Kong's lair. Look at that. That's a, cool a similar shot. shot. Also, he's black. So. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Do you think that the 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 suit gets too creepy with faces like that? Because I think it kind of does. Oh god, things are about to get creepy. We've only got about an hour left of this movie, though. You know, it's kind of it's flown by. I think it's it's paced pretty well. I think that it's flown by a little more for you than it has for me because I th- I think that it's dragged a bit. It it doesn't have like the perfect pacing that thirty three has. That's one thing. Thirty three has like perfect pacing, but it's 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 pretty good. You know, I mean, I'll agree. I mean, we're over we're over halfway through this movie already, and uh, I don't know. I don't Again, feel like I, just, I, I think you feel the lack of fantasy in this version. Oh boy! Yeah. I feel like maybe it's less about fantasy in this version. It may no, be a little I, again, bit I think you're right. I'm just, I'm just saying that that helps fill out runtime. More about atmosphere, maybe, or um, I think it's more about human drama. I think it's more about dumb Jessica laying titties. <laughs> That's what this scene is certainly about. See, this is a recreation of a scene that was cut from Thirty Three originally. Actually. The the scene that this is based on, you can't, you couldn't see at the point that this movie came out. Clearly, somebody did. I don't know if you noticed earlier, but when they pulled Dwan out of the water, uh, uh, you could see nips. I'm just saying. Like, oh, yeah, they're not that, hiding anything in this version. That, oh, did you, see, did you see how he flicked her boob just now? Oh, he's going to do a lot a lot of that. Like, look at this. Oh, oh my. Oh, boy. You see, he... Oh, oh, look at the oh, face. Look at the look at the face. Oh, yeah, you can see. You're going to see plenty of side boob and full-on boob. Bill Cosby, is that you? You know, Kong is uh, Kong is definitely crossing some lines here. He's crossing some moral lines. Oh, Dwan with the, with the, with the shell necklace and the, the dress and the, the, the boobs. Oh, there's the big snake we've been waiting for, and it looks terrible. That's not the big snake I intended to show her. Uh, this is the one she's going to get, though. And it's not nearly as big as Kong's big snake. It doesn't look as bad as I remember it in my childhood, but this isn't a good fight. <laughs> I think the fangs are pretty bad, but I think other than that, it looks pretty good. I mean... I, I don't know. I don't think you're right, but okay. The, this, it looks like a big toy snake. It's got... The head has zero dexterity. I just mean that uh, I think I think the sculpt is fine. You know what I mean? It just doesn't move like a real animal. Okay. Like the like the design of it is, wow, that was a lot of side boob right there. Um, yeah. We cut back to that, please. Uh, so you can tell that this snake isn't moving at all, and that this is just the actor playing Kong moving around, making it look like the snake's moving. Run, run, you dumb fucks, run. I like the I way really they structured they... this, though, where they put the, the Kong fighting a serpent scene here, so that way it makes more sense. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah, that always freaked me out as a kid, too. I didn't like that because I was a big fan of reptiles, so I didn't really like that the snake died. Um, But I like that that's why Kong can't get to them. They're fucking idiots for waiting so long to start running, though. Like, they wait until the snake is dead. Like, that's the perfect opportunity, you dumb fucks. Like, go. You didn't re- you didn't like that the snake died because you were a fan of rept- reptiles. But you, but you do realize that the, that the T-Rex from the original movie, also a reptile. I never like, had a pet T-Rex, though. <laughs> okay. You never had a pet 50-foot-long cobra, though, either. Or no, but, okay, a couple things. That was not a cobra. No, and fair enough. Python. I did have I did have a pet python though, which is exactly what it, that was. But was it red and fifty and fifty feet long? No, but it looked okay. like, it looked kind of like that. That's an exact recreation of thirty three. Like that shot is identical. I don't I don't see the big distinction between I never had a T Rex as a pet, but but you never had a Titana boa either. I don't so. know, man. It freaked me out. There's more blood. And his violence in this version too. Fuck the whole snake thing. I mean, you see Kong rip the thing's head off. Like, I mean, you see him break a jaw in thirty three. That's it. That's fucking okay, brutal, that, man. That makes more sense to me. I, I wasn't. I wasn't protesting your, 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 your being weirded out by the scene. It was just your, uh, your justification for why it was a bit That's shaky. What I said first. <laughs> My brain had to put that together. <laughs> 
The way they trap Kong in this version also obviously makes a lot more sense. Even also- more so than 05. Logan, what did you do? I don't know, fucking uh, Logan was on this island, so uh, how does this fit in with the uh, timeline of uh, X-Men Origins, you know? Uh, Not at all, this is a reboot. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Bo. You're not, Damn, I had, half, you're not oh, looking half bad yourself. I had King Kong 76 on the wrong shelf, it should be over here with my X-Men movies, apparently. Um, I love that, that he's like, I want Kong to knock the wall down. That's cool, again, different, different than 33. I also like that they're both exhausted to the point where they're like, we can barely move. Like, that's pretty realistic, too. Like, they just ran across this whole island away from Kong. Although, Kong's lair doesn't seem to be as far in in this version as it does in 33. Where are the natives, though, during all this? Hiding. That's what they're always doing. Hiding. Something about this movie, though, is that they kind of disappear at this point. Yeah, they're going to stay hidden in this version on, like, 33. Exactly. In 33, you see him again. You see him again in 05, too, don't you? Like, doesn't. They kind of call... disappear in 05, too. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm thinking of the game version of 05, where. Yeah, the in the game show... version of 05, they pop up a lot. But in, 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 I, th- I think in the, in the movie, they, they kind of disappear as well. Definitely scariest natives. If you could take the natives from that movie and the Kong from this movie, it would be just terrifying. At least, like, at least Fred like genuinely seems to show concern for Jack. He's like, "All right, Jack, come on, let's go." Like he's not like, "Oh, Jack, great, Mwahaha, my plan is coming together." He's like, "Get him the fuck in here." Like he's he's not a bad he's not an evil dude. He's just a slimy dude. He probably wants to nail Dwan too. I mean, I'm not terribly unconvinced of that myself. I mean, I, I, I certainly do. I don't know. What's uh, what's Jessica Lang looking like these days? Uh, not she's look. She looks good, man. Have you seen her in American Horror Story? Oof. No, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm Google her, her real I'd quick. Let, I'd let her check into my hotel. What are you, Norman Bates? I, I, I join her coven. Okay. I'm guessing these are all American Horror Story uh, references. Wait, hang on. I can come up with more. I'd I'd give her, her, I'd give her, I'd give her asylum. You know, she uh, she hasn't she hasn't aged much. You know she she still looks pretty good. She's, she's obviously lack. This she's is obviously awesome. lacking her. I love this. Her, this is so cool. Youthfulness. But, uh, this always scared me too. Like Kong. Like ooh, yeah, like if he would have been up there a second ago, he would have been dead. Like that's that's so freaky. That's how you make a monster movie. Do you like that he dies in this movie? Yes. He's definitely the most morally reprehensible version of this character. I guess it makes sense for what his character is as opposed to the Carl Denham character. Yeah, like, I mean, Denham's just trying to make a movie and make a show. Like, this guy's trying to do some hardcore exploitation. The, uh... It makes sense for the Denham character to, like, survive so that he can sort of lament shit at the end. This is the only version, also, that's a straight-up remake of 33 that won't have the iconic "Twas Beauty That Killed the Beast" line at the end. Oh yeah, I mean they mentioned the Beauty and the Beast thing, so that's in there. But yeah, that line is not in there. Nobody to deliver it, because <laughs> Petrox that's, Man is the, the sentiment is still very clearly in there, though. Yeah, maybe even more so because of the the rape scene. <laughs> but well, I mean, I, I mean, it's still the idea of like. Kong getting so into Dwan is what killed him. I mean, that's the that's the idea in every version. I kind of low-key wish that that was Ether instead of Chloroform. Did um, you make that joke because Loki is in the new Kong, is in the new Kong movie? No, not not low-key, low-key. <laughs> right. L O W K E Y. You are burdened with glorious purpose, Dylan. And now was Kong make- is, bo- is burdened with glorious chloroform. Oh shit! That's such a, that's brutal. That was not a pun. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, they're they're not afraid to show like brutality in this version. Like no, this even is... though, 
like at the end, even though you still don't actually get to see Kong hit the ground, like he's not dead yet when Jessica goes down to look at him. Like he's his heart's still beating. Like it's just it's brutal, man. Oh, I guess there are some natives here. Oh, they come out. They're like, what? I really like this shot too because it's it's um it's indicative of what Jack says in a couple minutes where he's like. We killed their magic. They'll, that'll be a bunch of burnout drunks in a couple months because, you know, Kong gave them purpose and, and excitement and interest in magic. But it's now, also that we, rem- now that we dethroned him, you know, that island is just going to, again, just fall apart. Like, he again, he he gave them a sense of structure and, and understanding and, and yeah. control. It's also uh, reminiscent or foreshadowing of the ending of the film where... Kong is fucking laid out dying and and all the spectators come out to uh yeah and they start exploiting him right then and there. Yeah, no that, this is this is a much smarter movie than I think we and everybody else gives it credit for. And now we're on a different boat, which is which is cool. See, this is one thing that I think drags out the runtime. We spend a lot of time on this second boat. I, I like though that we get to see him en route back to America. That's always sort of a It's fine a, a, for a, five minutes, but I think it goes on for like twenty. Like it's a part of the narrative that's sort of missing from other versions. And I like the whole sequence where he gets mad the one night and Dwan has to calm him down. Mm-hmm. I feel like it maybe if that's all it was, maybe it would be a little better. Um God, this suit looks so good, D. Slight VLC delay, and now I'm watching them throw fruit at him. Wonderful. Yep, there's some fruit flying at him. I love all. <sighs> See now, I, I feel I feel conflicted about all this because I think it goes on for too long. But you're right. I like to see it. I like to see them en route. They account for the whole where do they put Kong in in the book version of thirty three? Because mm-hmm. in the movie, they don't really explain how exactly they get him to New York on on the on the Wanderer. Um, but in the book, they do. They they do a bunch of modification on on the insides of the ship before they actually go to the island to, to account for that. Obviously, in this, they didn't do that. They uh, they get this big fucking oil tanker ship. They tried to explain it a little bit in 05 by having the whole underbelly of the ship be, like, used for transport of animals anyway. Even still, they didn't show any space that was big enough to hold something like Kong. Exactly. That, that always... I'm always like, what did they build a fucking raft? Like, what did they do? Like, to... See, King Kong versus Godzilla was the only one prior to, uh, except for this, that ever offered an explanation by having the raft, which you had to do in that because you know King Kong is Godzilla sized, so you can't have him on a boat because he could. Either way, he would be able to knock it over. Growing up, I guess I was a bit ignorant as to how fucking massive these ships are, but I always used to think, could they really fit that monkey in that boat? But yeah, they totally could. Like, this is this is pretty. Pretty believable. I mean, if, oh. they, if they if they haul out the space, they could fit the original King Kong in in that boat. But and and, and if they explain that, it's fine. And, and and in the book they did, but in the movie they they leave that out. I mean, it's not really a big deal. Who cares? And again, I think that this part goes on too long. What do you think of the drama between the two of them over, you know, exploiting Kong for show business? How do you feel about all that? Do you think that that's well played and interesting and compelling, or do you think that that's just all? Oh God. Can we get to the monkey I think it makes perfect, something? I think it makes perfect sense given the characters and what their stances on this whole Kong thing have already been established to be throughout the movie. Obviously, Jack isn't into the idea of exploiting Kong. Uh, Duan's maybe not in love with the idea, but she still has this sort of like dream of becoming a star. and This is her sort of shot. And she's willing to bend her morality if it means using Kong to, to do that. Just like Wilson, I think, is. I think that she learned that from him as opposed to Jack, where Jack has kind of represented this more un- unbending morality. I mean, he he risked his life to save her. I think that she's definitely taking him as that kind of example, and I think that that's why they have this falling out of a relationship is that they don't... Um... See, so what I like about this whole exchange is that uh, Dewan is super conflicted, and yes. Jack and... And Petrox guy are like the angel and devil sitting on her shoulders. Exactly, right now. you're exactly right. He's the unbending morality, and he's the ever bending morality. Well, he's just a he's a total pragmatist. You know, he's all about like you know doing what he needs to do to to make a buck. Whereas Jack is more concerned with it's all about what can I do to make a buck versus what should I do. Exactly. He was so concerned with whether or not he could that he didn't stop to think if he should. Exactly. Um, I would Jeff love. To, I would have loved to have seen Michael Crichton 
write like a 70s book version of King Kong. Like a remade ver- book version. Oh, that would have been so cool. It would have been so in-depth, too. Just, just, I mean, the way he writes, like, he explains it. Based on this like, movie, even. Would have been awesome. Yeah, it would have been really cool. They should have got him to do a novelization of this. I think that would have been... Or even, happy. like, be like, hey, can you write this, the book and then we'll base the movie on it? <laughs> like, they could have been different. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm not They probably would have been, and the book probably would have been a million times better. I'm not a person who gets bent out of shape about like, oh, the movie wasn't like the book. Because if I, I, I wouldn't to... want Michael Crichton to make the movie, because I'm not somebody who particularly likes Westworld. But even still, because the way I look at it, if I want something to be exactly like the book, I'll just read the fucking book. That's why I'm not one of these Dragon Ball fans who doesn't like like the changes that are made in the anime. Because I'm like, okay, but I have the manga, and if I want to read that version, then fine. Yeah, exactly. You know? I, I I don't typically mind changes and adaptations as long as it's done for a reason, or if it's not that noticeable, or Whatever. Lack now, of lack of dinosaurs in this? I noticed that. Now we can debate all day about which version of a property did something better. But to, but to uh, critique something simply because it's different from the original and only on that basis is where I think it, a lot of people go too far in their sort of purism. Sure. But I think if it, if it sticks out to somebody as a problem, then I think that that's their valid experience. That's ev- Everybody has that valid experience. I think that the only thing is that this movie, I think, in particular, has more merit outside of the differences than I think most people give it credit for. It is a solid remake. We talked about a lot of things and all the similar elements that that are pretty much directly translated. But I, I really like all the modern depth that's put in. I mean, we we're just talking about, like, oh, what if Michael Crichton did a King Kong book? Like, it, this definitely dabbles into that. That's why that crossed into my head. Like, the whole idea of analyzing the exploitation of it, like, that's not in 33. They don't give that a second thought. They're like, well, of course we'll do this. I mean, the only second thought they give is that's probably going to be really destructive, as opposed to, oh, it's wrong. They're not really, they don't seem to so much be concerned with how destructive it's going to be at this point, it's more about the ethics of it, right? Well, exactly, because in the 70s is when sort of being conscious of the environment became more of like a thing that people did. Yeah, absolutely, like back in that, that's very of the time. Back in the 30s, yeah, you discover a new animal, cool, let's let's take it to the circus. Like, that's just common. Absolutely. But so, so the issue in bringing Kong back in 33 is not ethics, it's this will probably go bad. Yeah, is this a good idea? Um... Really, and the characters never question whether or not it'll even go bad. It just does. Like it's basically the writer of the script telling you this is a bad idea. This went bad. It's it's not any of the characters saying this might go bad. You know, in thirty three. Yeah, I don't remember them doing that. Um, Anglehorn and Jack were pretty against it. Okay, maybe I just forgot about that part. Initially, but, uh, they 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 didn't put up much of a fight after 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 Kong broke through the wall and just started attacking. Like they were kind of married to it at that point. But yeah, they were. They were all pretty against it initially. Because this is the 70s and environmental uh, consciousness has been raised quite a bit, You know, they would be remiss not to bring up the, the whole ethics question. Look, did you see the shift in expression there? Oh my god, that was great. That was pretty fucking amazing. He looks human in this shot. It's kind of creepy. Man, Rick Baker. Man, I don't know it's if he won an award for suit. this. But... It is an incredible suit. I doubt he won an award for this, but he deserved one. Like Imagine Jesus. Frick Baker made a Godzilla movie. Oh, that would be pretty fucking sweet. Imagine if Rick Baker made a King Kong versus Godzilla movie. Imagine if that eighties Godzilla movie had become a thing and they got Rick Baker to do the effects for it. Yeah. Oh the Steve Miner Godzilla nah, and never wanted that to be a thing. That wasn't that would have been shit, mate. That would have been Zilla 98, but in the 80s. Although maybe it would have been better to get that out of the way in the 80s and then... No, but you know what? If they would have made that in the 80s, they probably wouldn't have made my beloved Heisei Godzilla movies that came out in the 80s. 84 and Biolanti are two of my favorite things ever. But, you well, can't take those little... away from me. I don't know if you can say that it would have been 98, but in the 80s. It was a little bit closer to what the original Godzilla was than 98 was. I mean, let's uh, give it that one. Sure, fine. It was basically more of a Gorgo remake, but but even still. That's it, what I'm it was... saying. They should have slapped Gorgo on there, and I would have been totally on board. But in terms of design and tone and all that, it was much closer to a Japanese Godzilla movie than what 98 did. I guess. This looks really Yeah. 
That was very similar to the other shot we were talking about earlier with the blue screen. Yeah, I think the other shot was more spectacular just because of the scenery behind them, but it's still looks great here. I mean, it's still cool. I mean, it's very different. I think maybe that was why they paralleled it, because it's like, oh, we were in this vast, beautiful jungle. Now we're in this prison. Also, also in the other scene. Wow, that's really good. The the, the toe twitching and everything. and Oh, that's a parallel no. to when he they first met. Yeah, he's Another just letting reason. her go now. He doesn't even care. He's like, whatever. I'm broken now. That's that's really cool. Of course, another factor in why maybe the version of that shot that was on the island might have looked better is also that you know Jessica Lange was wearing less clothing um, at the time. That's a distinct possibility. Now I'm gonna post something to you. Do you think that these are maybe? the most kind of uh, intimately developed versions of these characters, like of Kong, Jack, and maybe not Carl, or, you know, Fred in this case. But but Fred and Carl are two totally different things. Let's not even talk about them like they're the same character anymore, because they're not. But no, Jack, they just fill the same role in the plot. Yeah, so, so let's say that that's all. more what we're talking about. But I th- I think that the 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 development of Kong's relationship to her and his relationship to the captors and and how he changes and how their relationship changes from being on the island to in captivity is is very interesting and a lot more developed. Like well, that was a really good scene because it was supposed to sh- it was supposed to show that he's kind of broken. Like he's like I don't care anymore. You know, she's yeah. just kind of trying to calm me down, whatever. I guess this is not really, there's no point to this anymore. Look at him. He's totally defeated. He doesn't give a fuck anymore because he knows there's no with, point. With regards to the four main stars of the film, you know, Kong, Dwan, Jack, and Fred, they are so fucking well rounded in this movie, so well developed. Their relationships are so well done. Uh, maybe more so than any other version. I mean, I don't know. Maybe when we rewatch Show Five, I'll have a turnaround on that. But uh, but right now, I feel like they're just the most round and just like complete versions of these characters that we have. I think you know what I mean? A lot like, of it is the performances. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, superb. Uh, but I, I I also think the period. And the oh look, because it was the bicentennial, you can see the the uh, the American flag on the uh, on the Empire State Building. Yes, that's true. This was the bicentennial. That's nice. That kind of mirrors the the pageantry that we see going on at the uh, the Kong show in this version. It's certainly absolutely. This is a very patriotic King Kong movie. Whether you like it or not, it's it's a lot more um, larger than life in this version than any other. Because it's usually just Kong on a stage chained up, and this one is like he's in like a giant. I think that's kind of awesome. He's in a giant cage inside of a giant oil pump and like fucking like I think that I've much more appreciated the way this comments on the period as I've gotten older. 33 and 05 are much more timeless fantasies and this is a you know this is a this is a a biting modern remake. Exactly. Well, 33 was always meant to be escapism. 05 was just trying to recapture that I mean, escapism. so's this, but it's it's a different kind of escapism. It's a it's a modern it's a modern science fiction. Well, I feel like this one has film. elements. I feel like this one has elements of escapism just because of, you know, what what it is. But at the same time, it's much more focused on what does Kong mean in the 70s? Like this story being told in the 70s, what what would that be like? Like what does that – how does that look? You know. I think a couple of things came together here to make the human stuff better. Jaws, number one. Yeah, that obviously sets the bar a little higher for human stuff in monster movies to make it more compelling and more engaging rather than just waiting for the monster to show up, which is your typical Godzilla oh, yeah. movie fair. Well, I mean if we want if we want to talk about King, uh, or film history, I mean, all time, all kinds of great things have happened in between thirty three and now that sort of raised the bar. I mean, no, but I'm just most... saying. But D Jaws came out the year before this, right? I mean, most of Hitchcock's career is in between this. Like, there's a lot of good shit that they he can didn't pull make from. Monster movies, though. I would even, I wouldn't even say the Birds is a monster movie. No, but I mean, he had a way of um, his, his movies. Uh, there was always something about the character interactions that you can kind of see a little bit of here and in all modern films. You know that. People feel more real, I think, than in like movies before that. You know what I mean? I can. Um, I, 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 I. That's an interesting point. I think. I think you might have something there. Um. Oh wow. 
See, I, I love how Jack goes to watch, even though he's totally against it. I think maybe that's kind of a commentary as well, where it's like, oh, <laughs> you know, he's still kind of indulging in the voyeurism of it all. But one thing I was also going to say earlier, I meant there was a second part to what I, what I was he's saying. So, he's more so there for Dwan, and also now he's looking at it. But he's looking at it in a different way than everybody else is looking at it. Everybody else is looking at this pageantry in a way, and like, oh, isn't this cool? You think and he's, he's there to be it. like, oh, this is going to go wrong. I'm going to watch. I think he's he's watching it like with disgust. Well, he's of, like, of course, but he's still watching it, is what I'm saying. He's still indulging in the spectacle. He, um, he's so, so doing I, what I would be doing if I decided to go watch Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> like I would just be like, "God, this is terrible." So, but I so, guess one, so what... one other thing I was going to say earlier is that I think. The lower budget of this also, and, and the kind of rush production that you mentioned earlier, the production troubles, made the story need to be tighter. Like, the human stuff had to be tighter, and, and the actors had to offer more up to make the thing work. And I think everybody came together here to make the best thing that they could, and I think that that helps it a lot. Um, it wasn't that the budget was lower, it was that it was going way over, and they had to, like, cut back a lot just to, to keep it afloat. Exactly. That the, so I think that those limitations helped them kind of sh- streamline it. I kind of like that they actually put a crown on him. I don't know. It's um, it's more in line with the period. It's very it's, like TV commercial, and this is the 70s. This is the height of like early TV commercialism. Well, he mentions uh, – there's a line at one point where he mentions this like as a counter to like Exxon's like tiger mascot. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's I think that's why this is in line. There's the bad robot. Again, ambitious. It looks nothing like the suit. <laughs> That, that, I always love that line watching this movie as a kid because it, it, it made it Ooh, real. That fun. was a great shot. Did you see his little reaction there? That was very ape like. His little yeah. like what? Like his little like click down. Ooh, those chains are shit. See, like, but I think the idea is that he's kind of brought out of his his depression and his in his apathy. By the fact that she looks in, like uh, not happy and 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 wrestle, like because the photographers are harassing her. Um, Look how proof this cage is, Bill. Yeah, no, this is not. But again, I think that they they underestimated him because he was fuck because he was fucking depressed. I think they were measuring him by the standards of other animals. That too, but I'm also saying that he was fucking mad, like depressed and apathetic before, and now that he got motivated by her being all harassed. Uh, he's all, he's all full of piss and vinegar again. He can break through anything. But, um, what I thought was funny, what I thought was funny a second ago was that when he, when he ripped the chains off and dropped them, the, the actor in the suit slowed down because on the robot, the, it was mad slow, like him dropping, it was mad slow. So they accounted for it, but it still looked terrible. That blue screen is really good though. Yeah. I don't usually, when I watch this movie, I don't usually notice when they cut back to the robot version. But maybe it's just because I'm looking at it this time, trying to be more critical because we're doing this commentary. I'm definitely noticing it this time. <laughs> Is Jack's dickishness coming out to you at all at this point in the film? It comes out more later when he's like, yeah, fucking kill those people in the helicopter. Oh, that moment. Okay, yes, definitely. Ooh, I forgot about that. That That is a key moment in that. You're absolutely right. That's the moment that really sells it to me. That's where he sort of goes a little bit over the line, I think. It's like Vince Vaughn in uh, fucking Lost World. <laughs> yeah. Park. Yeah. They're down there with the raptors, and I uh, stole all their bullets. And I'm like, you fucking asshole. I wish that well, pterodactyl... No, was the T-Rex. Oh. That was the more fucked up thing. Yeah. Ooh, he's dead. He got it really bad, too. He did. He got it like that one native in uh, in thirty three got it. Yeah. We didn't really get that in this, like that scene where Kong attacks the village. I guess the the extended city destruction scene in this is to account for that. Do you think that this kind of serves as a mirror to that? Kind of. Also, though, we didn't really get a sense of um, antagonism between him and the natives in this version. No, not they... at all. They were super, uh, super stoked about him. And then they when were he left, respectful. They were 
And then, but they also didn't fuck with him at all. They were like, we're not fucking with this thing because we know that we can't handle it. You know, the, these guys underestimate Kong. They're like, whatever. We can handle it. He ends up fucking maybe, up a lot of shit, though. Do you think maybe the big-ass wall is, is less to keep Kong out and more for the giant snake? Because, I mean... It seems like they had a, an arrangement where, like, he, he, he didn't fuck with their shit and they didn't fuck with his shit. And the only time that they ever really interacted was when they gave him a, a girl. And you mentioned earlier how it doesn't look like that wall would hold Kong back, and obviously it didn't. That's so an maybe interesting it was for, theory. So maybe it was for the snake. You might be right. And, I mean, assumedly, there might be some other big animals on the island. I mean, I assume didn't... that they were, like, hopefully he'll see it and go, well, I'm not going to go past that. Like, hopefully he just won't even put the effort into it. Oh, this is obviously if, another direct re, re, uh, you know, remake of a scene from 33. Imagine if King Kong... Too. I like this scene. Yeah. Imagine if King Kong saw the wall and he was like, what do they got in their Jurassic Park? And then fuck <laughs> Did you see the um, that really controversial Super Bowl commercial with the Trump wall? No. Oh. Well, there was... Okay, so there was a... I, I, I won't go too much into it because it has nothing to do with King Kong. Well, it kind of does. Well, the, the, so... There, uh, it, it, was a, it was a, it was a commercial for lumber, and there was and there was a scene you know where you know two you know uh, a Mexican mother and daughter were trying to cross the border, and they come up to it and there's the wall, and they're they're like oh what are we gonna do, and then they come to one point in the wall and it's made of like it's like this wooden door, and it looks like the Jurassic Park King Kong door in the wall, and when I watched that scene, I thought in my head. What have they got in there, King Kong? <laughs> and I was in class in that moment, and I started laughing, and I felt really bad. Um, but yeah, if you've seen that commercial, you know what I'm talking about. That's yeah, yeah. awesome! Oh, look at the explosion! That's so much yeah, better than the scene in 33. My God. The only uh, the only King Kong or King Kong the only Super Bowl commercial I saw was that uh, that one Logan TV spot with the Amazing Grace. You know. Oh, um, sure. Yeah, that was cool. You didn't see the Guardians one. No, there was a Guardians one? Yeah. It was pretty cool. They're showing the same stuff from that movie and over and over, over and over again, though, because they don't want to show, like, the last two-thirds of it. Yeah. I get a similar feeling with what they're doing with uh, Kong. Yes. And, also, and also Logan. They're holding something back in these Logan they're, trailers. They like keep a... showing us, like, this, like the first 45 minutes over and over again. And, exactly. I, and, and I think that we're all starting to put together what the what the other like hour and forty five is. Ooh, see, he's really smart in this. I think that this is also one of the smarter Kongs. O five is pretty smart too, though. Yeah, I feel like uh, I, th- I feel like Skull Island Kong might wind up being the smartest, just from what we've seen in the trailers. Where he, like, I mean, well, I mean, that's just your escalation. They'll have to at least try that. But I mean, this, this, yeah, this is a very intelligent gorilla. I think that every remade version of Kong will always be like, "Oh, we're making the smartest Kong." Maybe not Toho. I don't think they gave a shit. This is very like, oh, let's throw caution to the wind when we don't have to. Like, this is very like a horror movie cliche. You know, well, it's that's, to, and that's interesting to see in a King Kong movie. It's obvious to me that she's just exhausted and she needs a, an excuse to stop for a minute. So she's like, buy me a drink. And I guess in theory, if they're like, oh, we're going to go inside, I guess they feel like they would be safe. But if you're going to go yeah. inside, go in the basement. Maybe they do. And that doesn't work still. Oh, I guess they do. It is an underground bar, it looks like. But there's still windows to the outside and shit. Right. So. Yeah, they should have gone in like a fucking broom closet. Then they would have been safe. Also, she just she just quoted one of the oldest scientific misconceptions about apes not being able to yes. swim. Um, and he's doing enough, it right now. He's swimming. Yeah, and he's fucking swimming. He's proving it wrong. Like weird, weirdly enough, the fucking Tim Burton Planet of the Apes movie does it too. It's like a plot point in that movie. I'm like, that's that's wrong though. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, in evolutionary terms, apes usually try to avoid going in the water because that's where predators can get them. That's the well, misconception. Sure. I mean, felines don't typically like to get in the water in it either, but they do so. I mean, tigers do it more than they more can, than but they avoid it because they they're not like that's not where they that's not where they're adept. Exactly. Not every animal is like a human and can like fucking go wherever, you know. 
I mean, we're not great swimmers either. I mean, that's why sharks can are, are so fucking prone to to bite people is because we fucking are, we're floundering fish in the water. Yeah, it's true. But we have that we have that whole intelligence thing that allows us to fucking it's that whole adapt intelligence to. thing, whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, relatively speaking, that's why we've been able to uh, go far I love beyond that. Our... I, I love that he's like, listen. There's a lot of extravagant shit that I can't give you, so clearly, whatever. This is going to have to be whatever whatever it's going to be, and then we're going to have to be done with it. I think that he's he's being a Debbie Downer about this relationship, and she's being unrealistic about it. I think he assumes that she's very, again, sort of of the period. He's, he thinks she's one of these like shallow sort of 70s like, girls, you know. I mean, when an hour real- ago he wasn't wrong. But but in reality, there's a there's another dimension to her that I don't think, I don't think that I just don't think he's gotten to see yet. And I think that's the side that she's shown to Kong is the sympathetic, empathetic side. Yeah, and I mean, she, she does it. Of course, it comes out in full swing at the end of the movie. Um, I actually remember this blackout. I mean, I wasn't alive, obviously, but I remember it being talked about. Like, uh, I never felt that Fay Ray was all that broken up about Kong dying, you know? No. But at the end of the Dwan is, like, heartbroken, and it comes through, man. They build up a personal relationship that I don't think anybody really appreciates except her, and then I think Jack maybe does at the end. Maybe but not, it... though. Maybe him walking off, it shows that he doesn't understand. I feel like, um... They tried. That's one element of this version that they tried to replicate in the O5 version, and maybe not not too successfully, you know. Because in that version, also, fucking Anne and and uh, Kong build up more of a sympathetic relationship than ever was hinted at. It's in not really romantic, though. It's a lot more like more almost friend or um... no. Well, I mean, and realistically, the romance in this version is kind of one-sided. I mean, I mean it's always one-sided. I'm not saying it's too... But it's it's more like... She plays a lot more into it in this version. In 05, she's a lot more independent and a lot more, like, about showing that she stands up to him as opposed to just kind of, you know, showing that she's afraid of him. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that version of Anne feels the need to stand up to his advances, whereas Dwan just sort of, in the interest of survival, is sort of playing along with it as much as she can. Yeah, as as much as she can, absolutely. I love the mayor in this. He's like a sleazy Batman villain. He's like, "Will, where is the Kong going, Professor Prescott? The where are the other Kongs going? Where is the Kong going?" You know what I don't love about this DVD? That fur coat? The, yes. But no, the, the subtitles, this is something that they do sometimes in subtitles, and it pisses me off. Sometimes they kind of um, paraphrase what the character is saying, you know, in the interest of making it easier to read, I guess. I don't like that, though. I want, I want accurate subtitles. I've always gone back and forth about how I feel about the World Trade Center being what Kong climbs. I think it's pretty cool. I think it makes sense just because, you know, the reason they had him climb the Empire State Building in the original is because it was the tallest building at the time. And in the 70s, that's the World Trade Center. So, you know, what else? You're not going to have him climb the Empire State Building again when there's more impressive structures around. Absolutely. I mean, sure. It it's more, again, it's more of the time. And sure, it might make it a little weird to watch now in this in, in the post 9-11 world. But How did you he know. get his arm in there, realistically? Okay, I guess he broke through something. You think he would have had to burst through the side of the building, though, to get her out of there, don't you agree? I love this scene. Yes, this is an awesome scene. I love the music coming out of the cathedral. It's it's the it's the theme from the movie, just played like on on, on an organ. I love whenever you have a character who shows up in a monster movie for no other reason than to react to the monster in a comedic yeah, way. Yeah, they're my favorite. A lot. So I've written a lot of short stories that's literally just that, just like little short bits about people who react to monsters and stuff. I love that. It's 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 one of my favorite things. 
it's always like that's what I want to do at a monster movie, Bill. I just want to show up at a monster movie, see the monster, and then just take like a, a big a, a big drag off a fucking uh, out of a fucking flask. Like Jesus, <laughs> like you know. I'm gonna we're gonna make it happen for you one day. Or no, you know, or you know, you stumble out of a place with like a whiskey bottle. You look up and see the monster, and after he's gone, you look at the bottle like, what the fuck am I drinking? And usually the cliche is they would throw it out, but instead you just keep drinking. <laughs> yeah, shrug. <laughs> Man. It's kind of interesting how this plays now, because it's obviously supposed to be a big deal at the time. It's like, oh, wow, look, the World Trade Center, it's this big, impressive structure. And now we see this because it's like, wow, that's the World Trade Center. Alive and well in 1976. But I have that weirdness whenever I watch any pre-9-11 movie that includes the World Trade Center. Like, you know, yeah. fucking... Uh, it always comes with a certain degree of awkwardness these days. Like, it pops up momentarily in Home Alone 2. And you're like, well, that that's a downer in this family comedy. <laughs> yep. And this is interesting, obviously, because it has a giant monster climate and fight military stuff on top of it. And in a helicopters weird way, though, right? crash into the side of it. In but, a weird you know, way, that's not that's not indicative of anything. But in a weird way, just to uh, sort of make a little bit, you know, to make the best of a bad situation. In a weird way, it does sort of add though to the to the kind of otherworldliness of the movie. <laughs> that, I, mean? I think I think you're right. Again, I think I th- it maybe it, it feels more distant, feels more uh, romanticized. Like the romantic more, version of our world is one with the World Trade Center still standing. More of the time. Yeah, actually, it, it winds up turning this movie into into, into a tiny piece of uh, post nine eleven escapism. You know, you watch the movie and you're like, oh look, it's still there. Yeah, yeah, Nothing that's interesting. Nothing ever happened it? to it. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I, I think that this that's that's not great blue screen because the color of the ground is totally different than Kong. You know what always bothered me a whole lot worse than the World Trade Center's use in this movie is that fucking line in, in Godzilla 98 where the reporter is like, in the worst disaster since the World Trade Center bombing. Yes, because that's not the it's not the World Trade Center bombing that everybody thinks it is. No, no. Because uh, how many times have the, has the World Trade Center been? I mean, we shouldn't talk about this, but how many times was it? Was it three? Not including, you know, 9-11. I was only aware of, of, of the one in the 90s. Was there another one? Jesus. Um, how many times, times did they try to take these fuckers down? I, I'm just basing this on different stuff I've heard throughout history. This is also yeah. kind of now directly translated from 33 because at the time, not only was the World Trade Center obviously the tallest building in the world, but if I'm not mistaken, they were only recently constructed, right? Like they were a pretty new thing at this they, point. Yes, absolutely. They were a relatively new thing. Not Which as, is also not not as new as the Empire State Building was, though. That's an awesome shot. Yeah, but that's also true of the Empire State Building in thirty three. It, exactly. it was a pretty new. But but more more so because the building was only built like a year before, and they weren't even sure which one was going to be taller: the Empire State Building or the Chrysler Building. Yeah, I'm not even sure. Sometimes, sometimes I'm playing like a Spider Man game, and I go to the top of one of them, and I look at the other one, and I'm like, which one's taller? <laughs> the Empire State Building is taller. Okay. I've seen them in person. <laughs> I, I have two, but only from a distance. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. You have now. Three motherfucking times, man. Uh, you should have fucking looked harder. <laughs> um, I think this shot really works. See, look at the life in his eyes again. Oh, we're coming up on it, though. The fucking most brutal. He's not broken <laughs> anymore, though, right? What? Kong. No, no, not emotionally. He's about to be broken in a much different way. Right, um, but I think I think that's the point, is that, oh, I'm back on top, literally. And he's about yeah. to go crashing down. Do we need the flamethrowers? This, this, you could cut this out. This almost feels like a deleted scene, where you'd watch this later and be like, oh, wow, look, they cut out the, some people using flamethrowers. Yeah, right. I think it's just a reason to get him to jump over to the other building in order to put distance between himself and Jack. That's a Why neat not little... just have that be the helicopters, though? 
That's a neat idea, though, to have him. I guess that's something that they could do with the World Trade Center that they couldn't do with the Empire State Building. But, you it, have does, Jack, but it makes more sense for the helicopters to be the motivation for that. You have Jack follow him up the building like he would in the Empire State Building, except then he jumps over to the other tower, and it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> like Now I can't get one, you know? Yeah. It sort of reduces Jack to being a spectator, and that sort of adds a feeling of helplessness to the whole thing, I think. Yeah, definitely. But don't you agree that you could have just done that with the helicopters and it would have made a little more sense? You could have, but I mean, who doesn't want a flamethrower? <laughs> I think just, I just think it makes this too long. Oh, we're about to get Jack turning into a fucking psycho. A homicidal lunatic. Yeah, three men are dead. Woo! Several children are probably orphans. Great. Widows. Awesome. You know, I feel like Jack in this portion of the movie is the human embodiment of the entire internet's reaction to the Harambe incident. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean like when the memes finally died or when he actually died? He's still got the girl. Yeah, like when he when he dies and like like well Jack Jack's rooting for the gorilla throughout this entire thing despite Oh, the fact I see that... what you're saying. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. You're right. Oh, but, here we are, but, D. Man, I love this. I love the lining up of the fucking machine guns. That's so cold and calculated and ooh, I love it. It definitely yeah, gives love... the it gives the 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 military and the murder more of a sense of like coldness in and yeah. kind of Ab- abject cruelty as opposed to so, 33 where it's as it, where it's more kind of an adventurous kind of you know triumphant takedown also love the upgrade from from airplanes to helicopters in this movie because tactically it makes more sense they can maneuver better um also like this, it's, this is an execution this is not a fight oh, look at it with this with the squibs and the blood oh it's 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 he's so, also like he's also not like, oh, I'm gonna have to fight. He's like, what's going on? And then he just gets fucking shot. Like that's all. Oh, so and brutal. his react, his reactions every time he get, and he's fucking covered in blood. We never see that in the other version of Kong. Jesus, like look at him. He's well, mostly you blood. do when he hits the ground. You see, but you see blood on thirty three, but not to this extent. It's also in black and white, so it doesn't stand out as much. No, it does. It does stand out pretty well though. Man, this look at like- it. He's so fucked up. Like this he doesn't like, get any kind of to to do or any kind of um any kind of come he doesn't get any kind of come up he the military doesn't really get much of a come up in this I think he like does he take like, I think he does take down one helicopter though he's he looks like he's just been put through the world's largest cheese grater and it's in beautiful Technicolor and that's just how fucking brutal this movie is uh, that composite isn't great but um I think, the helic- I think it's a little late for that Duan. Yeah, oh, serious. Yeah, it's it's a little late. We're already like, like just... over halfway there. Come on, the movie's only got a couple minutes left. Like, just let him die. <laughs> yeah, no, that composite's not great. The helicopters are way too big. Yeah, unless he goes to the world's largest uh, intensive care unit, it's it's pretty much over for him right now. Oh, Duan. he took one down at least. Oh boy, great! Uh, aerial vehicle crashing into the World Trade Center. Oh, that's always nice to see. Thankfully, it was only helicopter fuel, so it couldn't melt any steel beams. Oh, boy. We're going to get comments about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, my God. This is just so fucking, like... Yeah, no, as a child, so fucked up. Oh, my God. Child. Look at the hands raising up. <gasps> oh, man. And this is also fucked up. They do this in both this version and 05. I can't think of a more brutal death scene, like, from my childhood, really. Like, it's just so fucked yeah. up. Again, it's similar to 05, but 05 plays it up for, like, sappy sadness. This is, like, just really brutal. Again, this was not a, a triumphant takedown. There is no... This is a fucking execution. It is Kong easily... got put in front of a firing squad. Ooh, that's yeah. so fucked up. It's easily the most. Oh, that doesn't look good, but it's real sad. Not just brutal, but fucking heart wrenching. Of all three of the Kong deaths that we have in the, in the main movies, you know. Oh, we don't um, we don't see him hit the ground in this version either. No, uh, but we saw him fall and 
I like that shot, like, just on his face, like, right afterwards, where he's like, oh, God, I'm fucked up. Well, we see him alive in this. Like, this is, like, that's different. Like, he's, oh, that's so sad. He's like, Dwan, is this, that you, this Dwan? Kong, this Kong is maybe my favorite personality of all the Kongs. Managed to stay alive long enough for Dwan to come down the elevator. I guess that's a conceit that we have to live with in order to have this beautiful moment. Okay, so yeah, she's definitely not still on top of the building, right? No. I fucking love the heartbeat, too. It's a great element. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be... I I mean, I mean, in this... Technically, the sequel to this, he survived ten years after this, so... I mean, I guess it's not totally out of the realm of possibility that he could survive that long. That's true. He's, That's true. he's King Kong, after all. We can talk, but we can talk about the sequel and how much I don't hate it as much as everybody else. Next time, <laughs> that'll be an interesting one. We're not quite done with this yet, though. No, we still. I really, I think that this is where her acting really comes out, comes across as solid. I, okay, this is I will... also the big, the big Kong puppet works here. It's it's not a perfect translation of the suit, but it looks a lot better than the robot. And I just love how the paparazzi is swarming her, and she's just so distraught. Like, it's it's perfect. Yeah, the, apparently this scene, when they shot it, like, the extras got really rowdy, and it became, like, a problem. Because you realize, she went along with the whole pageantry of this thing because she wanted to be a star, and now, so she's partially responsible for his death. Abs- that's why Jack disowns her. I mean, I think that she understands that. See, but he makes sure he sh- that she's safe, though. Although I don't think that that's safe, I, I, I he really should get in there. Like she's with, she's not with friends. He definitely doesn't come across as great here. That is a very powerful ending, though. That is a very different, unique, and and makes a very different statement. D, what kind of statement do you think that makes? The price of fame. Yeah. Price of fame. The price of exploi- of... exploiting someone for fame. Moreover, on the on just the surface level. Oh my god, there's some shit that should not be. That guy's waving at the camera. You see that? <laughs> yeah. Um, at least nobody pulled their dick out at the end of this movie. No, nope, that is um, some, that is some shit that should uh, some Hollywood Babylon esque shit that should not be. Also, on just the surface level, it, it all the ending brings up just a whole feeling of wow, isn't this fucked up? <laughs> like. Absolutely. This is maybe the darkest King Kong movie. I I, I think I could agree with that. I mean, because if O five is not O five is like Tim Burton dark. It's gothic. It's 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 Art Deco. It's fantastic. O five is O five is this aesthetic. is this is this is gritty. O five is dark in an aesthetic sense. I mean, there are a few scenes that get really dark in that, like the slow motion, like guy getting killed when they first like meet up with the natives and shit. But overall, like this, is, this, has, this of... has ed- this has an edge to it, though. Yeah, there's a certain uncompromising. Oh, just Joyce vision. Selznick. I wonder if she's related to David O. Selznick. Possibly. There's a sort of unabashed uh, and un- unapologetic sort of uh, brutality. To to the, to this version, it's just like, yep, this is what would fucking happen. That's all there is to it. Like, <laughs> absolutely. Well, that's it. The Kong's dead. The credits are rolling. Dwan's life is probably over forever, and Jack is probably going to wander the countryside, you know, trying to build a new grass hut. So, um, all right, D. So you you love this movie? Already. I fucking love. It. How did you feel about it this time? I mean, the same way I usually feel about it. I mean. You know, um, it was certainly very rewarding to uh, to sort of watch it in in this way and sort of discuss it with you as we were watching it. Um, I don't know. I feel like I I feel like it only made me love it more. Honestly, <laughs> uh, it's you know maybe it's the nostalgia talking, but uh, whenever people cri- are not necessarily criticize this movie because I can certainly handle criticism, but, but people who outright hate this movie, I just don't get it, and they're out there. But I mean. I don't know. Critical reception at the time is not on their side. Uh, this movie received uh, f- everywhere from flattering to rave reviews at the time. It, it made its money back. Despite it was very the, popular. Uh, problems. It was. It was sort of a second explosion to Kong in a way that I don't even know if 05 was. You know. Um, 
to the, I mean, to the point where people thought that this this was the original King Kong when 05 came out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people didn't know about the 33 version. Um, I don't remember a time when I thought that, but I'm sure there was a time like that probably I in my life. I never had that experience. I saw 33 before this. Because, like I said, I mean, we I, we didn't have a, a home copy of 33. I'd wind up seeing it on TV at some point. So I'm sure, as a small child, there was probably a time when I didn't even know that that movie existed. Um, Understandable. All right, but, D. Uh, but, yeah. Sorry. What about you? Uh, what was your What was your take on it this time? You're You're a bit more uh, critical of the movie than I am on on the base level. So, what What did you think watching it again this time? I I really enjoyed a lot of it. I mean, I think the I think the middle dragged. Interestingly, I thought so. I think a lot of the stuff on the island dragged, and that's interesting. That's because that's not the case in every other fucking version. The stuff on the island is usually not the stuff that drags, but I I think that just not enough stuff happens there. There's a mm-hmm. lot of good, you know, char- inter-character drama in this. There's a lot of really good thematic ideas and motifs in this. Um, but maybe there's not enough well-executed action and well-cut um, in, in, in the moment sort of stuff happening. Um, it's a bit floaty. It's a bit meandering. But it's kind of a 70s epic. And they're all kind of like that. And... I think as as that as a as a 70s kind of blockbuster epic version of King Kong it's pretty fucking great. It's pretty well made, it's pretty fun, it's well cast. It's it's ugh. it's just got some cool shit in it. And I really I really just like that aesthetic, that 70s classy aesthetic to King Kong. I think it makes sense in a way. Um the bicentennial and- element works. I just I there's there's a lot of really good stuff that came together for this film to really stand out um, from the rest of the Kong films um, and kind of overcome its problems to, to, to stand out as something pretty cool. You know, one thing that we talked about a lot in this commentary, but I think a lot of people probably uh, gloss over when they watch this movie or maybe don't notice or appreciate is that this is a very well acted movie as well. Um, yeah, again, as I said, I think that this is the best performed Jack, not the best performed Juan slash Anne. Yeah. Um, I think that Robert Armstrong, I will always prefer over Charles Grodin. Mm-hmm. I would even say that I prefer Jack Black over Charles Grodin. I think ah, it's just a matter you know of... what? No, never mind. I don't agree with that. I actually prefer Charles Grodin over Jack Black. I think it's mostly a matter of, though, you prefer that character and what he's about. Um... Jack Black's version? No, I mean just uh, Robert Armstrong. Fucking... Well, I, I, uh, Carl I, I, Denham. Is... I, I would even say the performance I think is still more endearing. I mean, again, I, again, I know that that's not the point, but that that's just mm-hmm. what sticks out to me. But even so, whether you whether you like him more than the other one or not, um, he he also delivered a, a good performance. I mean, him between him, Jeff Bridges, Jessica Lang, Rick Baker, obviously, and. Um, and even despite not having a huge role in the film, uh, Rene Auberjonois. Yeah, he's really, um, he's really great. I mean, I think you'd be you'd have to you'd have to struggle to point to a bad cast member. One one maybe that kind of humorously sticks out is like there was one like guy in the in the meeting scene early early on, um, where some where some guy was like a giant monkey. Are you crazy? And that was like what? <laughs> that that that's a hard get a different person. There's a million dudes in that room. Get somebody else to say that. Even even the black guy who's barely in this movie. I mean, even he's great, and he's only in it for like barely any amount of time. You know what I mean? Like, All the crew members that spoke, except for that one I mentioned, were really solid. Overall, it's a well-made movie. A lot of it is well-paced. It drags, though. They should have at least had one dinosaur. Just one. That's all I need. Just one. The, the snake was, was fine, but have it do more. I definitely think that would have helped, though, in all seriousness, which what you mentioned earlier of the snake having more of a presence in the mythology and, and in the uh, and have more interplay with the humans. What what would you think if um, they did something similar to what Skull Island is doing, where it's not more dinosaurs, but it is more big animals? I would have been more fine. I would have been more OK with that. I mean, I mean, I would have preferred a dinosaur, but yeah, I would I would have been more OK with just big animals. Yeah, do Especially kind of a son of Godzilla of thing, just big bugs and shit. Yeah, especially if you do again what I think they're doing with uh, the new movie, where there's a lot of them and like you sort of establish the whole ecosystem. Yes, I mean, I mean, the skull crawlers to me, 
until I see that movie, they look very similar to the Mutos. I need I need some reason for them to be differentiated before I can make a determination. Well, um, they're reptilian, first of all. That's one reason for you to, for you to like them better. Um, well, I mean, sure, but I mean, I'm just talking like, char- like character function wise. Yeah, I know they, what look, they look identical <laughs> as of the current moment. Um, but anyway, not the point. King Kong seventy six. Dylan and I think it holds up a lot better than I think a lot of people give it credit for. I think. It's even better than Ghostbusters too. Wow! Um, no, you're not gonna you're not gonna take that back later, are you? Because no, no, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I've, I've thought that for a while. That's more of a concrete thing that I've thought about. Dylan, come on, you, <laughs> the the movie that I did that with recently that he's referencing is a movie called The Land Unknown, which is another movie that's about like people going to a prehistoric land. Um, and, and I just while say that, we were watching built- that, I said, oh, this is better than Ghostbusters 2. And then yesterday I was like, that movie was not better than Ghostbusters 2. No, 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 no. In case people are wondering, uh, that movie, however, did surprise me and Bill with how good it actually was. Cause we yeah, went no, that into was it, actually a fairly solid movie. We went into that expecting it to be crap because of the trailer that we were both familiar with. And then it wound up being actually pretty solid for the time. Um, so, Like uh, this, recommend- though, like King Kong 76, dragged a bit. A little bit, so I would recommend that if you haven't, uh, go check out the Land Unknown. You know, for if you're like me and you're you're you've watched most of the the 50 sci-fi classics, and I'm, all, I'm always looking for a new one to to digest. Um, and we hoped you enjoyed checking out King Kong '76 with us here today. So, and we hope that maybe you enjoyed it a little more than maybe you did if you're one of the people who hate it. Um, but we hope that you know watching it with us maybe made it more pleasurable overall. Um, you know, as we're kind of going through the week of Kong. So, Dylan, tomorrow, what are we doing? On the next day of the week of Kong, we will, of course, be covering the sequel to King Kong, uh, featuring none other than uh, Sarah Connor herself, Linda Hamilton, uh, who's one of my favorite actresses, um, in King Kong Lives, which mm-hmm. is uh, much more infamous than this movie in terms of what people think of its quality. Um, I don't think we're going to do a lot of defending in that case. Maybe on your end. I will I, I will. I will. for the first 20 minutes, and then I'm going to shut up and just go, oh. <laughs> That's just going to be me the whole time. Um, so we hope you'll join us for that uh, when we talk about King Kong Lives Tomorrow, the movie where somebody only made like 15 cents off of it. That's a true fact. I'll get more details <laughs> on that. That's a true thing. We'll talk about it. We'll that. talk about it tomorrow. Uh, so yes, day five, the week of Kong, King Kong lives. We hope you'll join us tomorrow. We'll be millionaires, boys. We'll share it with all of you. 